Friday night yet. Friday night yet. Hi. Uh, boy, oh boy. Um, what a day. What a week. Uh, I got to have a spring break today. Or, well, this week. It was my spring break. And so I got to do a decent amount of streaming done. You know? Which was pretty nice. It was pretty nice to be able to have spring break and not really have to worry about school for a little bit. But now I'm like kind of nervous about going back to school because I feel like I've lost that flow again of just getting homework done and getting things done. So I feel like I've lost a little bit of that flow, uh, just a tiny bit. But I think it's a little bit more manageable, definitely more manageable this time around than like last year because wow what oh, it was crazy uh, how much I had to get done and on top of that I was also streaming too which was also just really crazy so yeah I'm today this semester has been so much more manageable uh, so that's gonna be exciting or, well, that is exciting for me, at least, because at least I can kind of... And also, I don't have Tuesdays or Thursdays with classes, which means I can actually take a time out of the day to be able to get homework done and also be able to get schoolwork done, at least, you know? So, it's been, it's been a very good time for me to get that done. And me moving my schedule over to, uh... Me moving my schedule over to, like... 6.30 has been nice. Also, the reason why the stream is a little bit late is because, uh... I, t I wanted to take a shower. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, I, uh... Okay, I'm turning the music now. There we go. 
Um, sorry if you hear any weird noises in the background. It's <laughs> I have no control over them behind me. Anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. I know, right? Uh, so this morning was fucking terrifying. I hope I was just, it was just like, because I just woke up, but I, I woke up, grabbed my shirt. I looked down at my shirt and I saw just a fucking spider right there on my shirt and I freaked out. So I like threw the, the shirt right onto the ground. I don't even know if it, if it got off or where it went. I don't know if it went onto the carpet. I don't know. It just disappeared. So it's making me question my sanity just a tiny bit, which is just fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's great. Another thing I need to work on is not saying um all the time. So if you notice that, I'm sorry, everyone does it. So yeah, it was, it was fun time, but I, I need to, my sleep schedule got so fucked up from daylight savings. Uh, I almost I didn't fall asleep till I couldn't fall asleep till 4 a.m. Uh, again this morning, which is great. Favorite game? Garfield Lasagna World Tour for the PlayStation 2. Uh, yeah, it was it was freaked me out, but yeah, I need to, I hope I can fall asleep tonight. Honestly, I I I don't want to. I don't want to have to struggle with falling asleep on, like, a school night, you know? So, and also, I am not streaming tomorrow, obviously. That's why I don't have it on the schedule, because I have a class literally at the time I stream. So, I'm, I'd am i rather use that time to either relax or get homework done than I'm going to be having to do. <laughs> I have a midterm kind of quiz thing for my web scripting. Which is gonna be hard, like really fucking hard, so I'm gonna probably try to get that, like, worked on throughout the week rather than just get it done the night before. Hopefully, I do that. I don't know if I will, because I'm lazy. I procrastinate too much. Uh, yeah. Also, good thing I did not play, uh, I did not play, uh, Death Stranding officially on stream <laughs> i just kind of have been streaming like i'll just do like i've been doing like streaming whenever i play games can't wait to play uh yeah try it out it's great you can probably find it somewhere uh i got it for ten dollars at a uh vintage store place called Stock. which over like they sell their games if it's classic no matter what they overprice it all the time go to like a local game store if you have one go to those because you're not only supporting local shops you're also getting a better price that's more um understanding and if it is a little bit overpriced just a tiny bit you're helping support the local game store so you i'd rather do that than but if you can't literally if they don't this is how my system works if the Local game store doesn't have what I'm looking for. I'll go to VStock. And if they do have it and I really, really want it, I'm willing to pay the little extra price for it. But again, they're, they have a similar policy with GameStop, basically, and how you can sell things back to them. I think they actually can give you money, but sometimes I think that's like it really depends because they might not have that money in the registers, obviously. So they probably give you in-store credit or something like that. So then they don't just give you hard cash all the time or they can't be able to do that. You know, you're not, most stores, they're not gonna just have that, um, like a shit ton of cash on the registers for the sake of, they don't, whenever they get robbed, they don't lose a bunch of money, you know? Also, speaking of losing a bunch of money, that reminded me of a YouTube channel that I just randomly watch videos of and I don't know why. Similar to the Fisher YouTube channel, which I watch almost, I watch their daily videos that they upload whenever they, sometimes they don't upload every day, but sometimes they do. But uh, this channel is called, 
how do you even say their name? They're the Subway guy. They're the guy who makes sub sandwiches, and he talks about working at Subway. And then gives advice to sub owners, which would, for some reason, watch his videos, I guess. But in the in this case that they do, uh, I just watch his short, like, three-minute videos. He's literally just making, like, Moist Critical videos, or Penguin Zero, however you want to call him. Uh, he's making just Charlie's videos, but as a subway worker. Because they're short, they have the content, and they end. That's it. It's the same format, where they start it, say what needs to be said, then end it. They don't keep it too long and everything. It's nice and sweet. Short and sweet. And yeah, pretty nice. What else? Let me see here. Yeah, they're called like a um, mil something. They have like a weird name. Oh, there it is. Um, my lad mer, my lad merg, or merge or whatever the fuck it's called. Whatever the heck it's called. Ah, uh, yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, but yeah. What else? Oh yeah, me and the boys hung out. That's why I didn't stream yesterday. Uh, I might just not schedule anything on Saturdays for the sake of that specific reasoning. Is that we may or may not hang out on Saturdays. I think I'm going to change the schedule to that. Because I never know if we're going to hang out on Saturdays or not. Uh, but the last two times we have, so... I, I may or may not take it off if it happens one more time in a row. Then I'll probably take off having a stream on Saturdays or scheduled on Saturdays. So then I don't have to cancel it every time. So then people don't have to expect to have a stream on, you know, Saturday. But yeah. That's just how it be. You know what? I'm going to do that right now, actually. Let's do it. Channel. I don't want to hear myself. Okay. Let me go to schedule, edit schedule, which I don't even know if people even use. Uh, let's see, Saturday. Just trash it. There we go. What? Wait, what? What the fuck? Oh, they really changed it up here, didn't they? Well, no stream scheduled. What do you mean? It's the end of the week here. What do you mean? Okay. So, on Tuesday... Wait, every Monday? Why did I put that there? No, 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 no. Mondays don't have streams. Wait, what the fuck? Hold on. Yeah, get rid of that. Wait, hold on. Let me just delete the schedule and let me redo it. Yes, delete the schedule. Let me fix the schedule because for some reason it's just weird. It's just acting all funny. It's acting all weird. So, we got on Mondays nothing. Tuesdays, we'll do Shin No. 2. Wednesdays, um, we do have something. So yeah, we're gonna add another. Uh, it is... I'm not sure, but it starts at 6.30 p.m. And then we're gonna go... Bam. Repeats. Why does it say every Monday? It's not every Monday. They're really fucking up the schedule, aren't they? That's great. It's every Thursday. And then on Wednesday, we have whatever I feel like. Whether it's Shenmu or it's not. Bam. Every Friday. Bam. And Sunday we have just chatting. So it's just the every week we just talk about stuff. Okay. Well, bam. Schedule is set up. Now, why does it say upcoming events every Monday 
every Monday, every Monday, and every Monday, when it's not every Monday. So, great. Good job. Good job, Twitch. You're really, you're really doing us a favor here, aren't you? You're really making the schedule make sense. When... Fucking... It's so fucking stupid. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll be fine. Whatever. Hopefully it's fine. <sighs> yeah, another thing, yeah. I think I mentioned this. I don't think I mentioned this yet. I, I probably did on stream. But they, uh... I did, yeah. I mentioned this on stream this week. Um, they, Twitch rolled out a new DMCA kind of update thing. I don't know what you call it. It's just this thing. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But it, it's just... It's here, I guess. Yeah, that's probably the best way I could describe it. It's just here. Or something. Another thing that's weird is everything has like that ring around it. I don't even know if mine has a, a specific color or not. I don't even think it does. I don't even know how to look at my channel through not my view, but like... I guess I could probably do like a... No, that wouldn't even work, would it? But, man. Shoutouts to anybody who works in fast food or anything related to, like, food, I guess. Because they have it hard. I'll, I'll tell you that. They, they have it hard. Same with retail workers. Just anybody who works in commercial. Like, just commercially. They, they, they have it hard. You know? And I feel bad for those people who have to deal with customers who are complete dicks or assholes. Uh, to their- to the co-workers who are working probably less than how much they make. And they're being treated like dog shit. Like, they're- they need to work even more. Like, harder than they do. Even though they're not even get, really getting paid that much to begin with. At least the part-time ones, at least, you know? Even that. Like, they're just college students, too. Sometimes Some of them are college students, and they have to deal with bullshit. You know? So it's really freaking annoying whenever you have people like Karens or some shit, where they're complete dicks to the co-workers because they feel like they need to be like that. I don't know where how you grow up. I don't know who raises you, but whoever is raising Karens needs to stop. Because they're not helping at all they're not helping anyone they're just making people's lives more miserable and they expect to get everything fed to them <laughs> you know they expect everything to them even if they, they again the customer is always right which is not always true but it sucks you know you have to treat the customer because if they don't if you don't then they won't come back and your goal is to try to get customers so if you keep if you send people like karen's out easily you know you're gonna have issues because they're not gonna come back or they're gonna do some bullshit where they complain and just make even worse uh issue with the whole business and then it just causes a bigger issue then people are gonna be like wow this place is very unprofessional because they're rolling because a karen is now screaming at them and they're not you know Obviously, at that point, they're probably gonna have to leave them out, like, have them go, but it's gonna be, it's gonna look bad. Uh, so, yeah, it sucks. It sucks that we have people like that. I don't know why people can't just be normal. So, I mean, most, there's a lot of people working in retail for a bit now. There's a lot of people who are actually really decent to coworkers now. It's, it's, it's becoming better. It's, it's gotten a lot better. Um, working at a grocery store is the hardest, I think, especially if you're a cashier. You have so much you have to do as a cashier. Um, I had to do so much for, you know, the amount that I was even being paid. I did way more. I did above and beyond. And even then, I wasn't really getting any kind of raise system or whatever because how they do it, in a way, I guess it makes sense, is that the more hours you put into it, the m it'll go towards getting a raise. So if you put this amount of total hours from all your shifts, then you'll get a raise. Like, I think it's like a 50 cent raise, um, which isn't a huge amount. I feel like that should be, like, at least a dollar raise. If you're working a lot, like, you know, if you're working full-time, 
having a dollar raise would be very nice. Having a 50 cent raise is a little... I mean, it's, it's good. Maybe, like, if they did, like, 75, I'd be like, okay, sure. But 50, that's, that's still kind of on the lower spectrum on raises. But... I'm sure that there's probably pla some places don't even give you nearly that much. And it, what's even more annoying is that I've learned the places that have the shittier people. Like, I'm, I'm not even joking. So far, I, I don't even know how this happens. But me working at the grocery store place where I was being paid like nine fifty an hour. That was my, I think I started out as $8 an hour as a bagger, and it went up to $9 when I was working, most of the time I was working there, it was $9 an hour, and then at the very end, I think it was like $9.50 or $10 an hour, at the very end, but even then, I was being paid even less than $9 an hour, I wasn't actually being paid $9 an hour, because I was also paying all the fees and everything, like uh, taxes and also union fees and things like that. And, you know, I was working really hard, and all my coworkers were working really hard to work together. We had baggers, which is really nice, which, they're, by the way, the grocery store that I worked at, that depart that company, they're, I guess, getting rid of baggers, which is really fucking stupid, because that just means that people are losing jobs. And then you're making the ca you're making the fucking cashiers do even more work. It's, it's really hard to get, like, if someone's getting, like, 100 items... If someone's getting like 100 items and you're you need a bagger right you're gonna need a bagger to help you bag that stuff up and i used to work till closing all the time like every single day i was working till close uh two i think it was 2 40 to 11 p.m um yeah all basically as eight and a half hours i was working i think yeah eight and a half hours i would be working that sometimes three times in a row and then most of the time it was like six hour or seven hour shifts. Um, it was, see, I'm, there you go, I'm going um again. Uh, I just did it again. <laughs> I need to have a shot collar whenever I say uh or um. So then I can teach myself not to say it. So then I don't hurt myself. That's, that's That would be a good system, just do that. <sighs> okay, so... <sighs> So yeah, we were working for not really pay being paid a lot. The the best thing I think they had was probably the union thing, I guess. But it doesn't really matter when you're just working there. And also the training. They have a actual standalone training where I have an, a person who's been working, a veteran worker who's been working there for like 40 years. And she trained me. And I got to ask so many questions. And we just sat there at like a register on our own in the back. Uh, just learning how to do the basics and then they had i stood they stood next to me while they taught me how to do everything and made sure i did every, everything correctly and then my first time out of it it was really um it was really hard and then whenever people were learning to be cashiers i was just i was that guy to help uh help the new people out because you know i basically just learned most of how everything worked uh I'm pretty much mastered it, in my opinion. It was just really tiring and stressful because it, those baggers really did help, though. Uh, yeah, it, and them getting rid of that is really annoying. But I digress. The fact that I got paid little and everybody was doing really good when I transitioned to a job that paid more. Uh, well, other than the bookstore that I worked at afterwards, uh, that place actually did pay. They had good co-workers for the most part. They were pretty good. The issue was that it was just a temporary job. I, I couldn't get a full-time or, well, part-time job there, which would have been really nice because it's actually very similar. The only issue or the only difference is that I'm trying to help people find books. And during Rush, I was, like, really going. It. Like, it was just constant work, you know? Constantly being at the cash register, but my favorite thing about it was that I never had a bad customer once because everybody knows that if you're going into the bookstore, you're paying a shit ton of money uh, if you're going to the school's bookstore, you know, so a lot of people don't come in with that expectation almost instantly. So most people, if they're, if they can't fucking afford it or if they have to, they have to stop having a, they can't buy the book right then and there, they're like, they, they're more sad about themselves rather than the actual store itself, even though 
you know, the store is overpricing the books. I mean, come on. But some people, they they need to get it right then and there. And, you know, the school can manipulate that. You know, it's right there. It's right on campus. So, you know, they can get away with it, I guess. But man, books can be expensive. This was the first time I got to basically pay my books with my own money. And I did it all outside of the bookstore, and it ended up being cheaper. The only things that- the most expensive stuff, I think, was a, one book, and there was, like, it was the programs that I had to, de like, buy, like, math program and stuff like that. That's probably where the most of the money went to, was just getting all that, which was really annoying, but... Whatever. Bought the books, you know? But, yeah. Anyways, so after that, I worked at, at Chipotle, and man, did the co-workers suck. It paid more, but uh, that's why I said, it, for some reason, it feels like the more you get paid, the worse the co-workers are. For some reason, I'm skipping this song. No, we're skipping you. This song sucks. But yeah, they, they got paid more but they were worse and it was also a different thing it was the first time i was working with food basically uh and wow customers are worse customers are terrible or they can be terrible some of them are good some of them are understanding but there are you got increasingly worse ones too like not even at like the grocery store i had bad co-workers because obviously i'm the one checking the food out i know kind of what's going on and so even the people going through my lane they know who i am because they've been there multiple times they go there almost every week so they know who i am so you know it's like kind of like you learn to know your customers surprisingly uh you build that kind of system with uh chipotle we had like a guy who would just come in and just expect you to know every single one it, and he'd remember the co-workers too but man that one was also hard because there was also another type of micromanagement where i had to know measuring how much food was each in each one so i could prepare the cooks behind me on getting things down but what really killed me was the co-workers it wasn't even the job itself it, or the customers the customers were hard especially if you had like ones that had thick accents and how loud it is around the area it is so hard to hear them i had i i would actually frustrate people and i'm sorry it's just so loud that it's hard to hear you especially with a glass there with the customers behind me or well with the with the co-workers next to me with the cook in the the stove and everything behind me and with everything being hot it was just really difficult to work in uh especially during rush but whenever there was it was like kind of dead it was nicer it was a lot nicer there's times where i had to work on the front by myself a couple times uh but my favorite thing of all was that we were we the the boss was cool enough for us to basically just get free food. So I, well, you get free food, you get one free meal. But the the biggest thing that I liked about it was, uh, was that I could take it home, which you normally can't do. But they were just like, yeah, sure, you can take it home. I'm like, fuck yeah. I loved taking home my food to watch a, a streamer of mine that I like to watch play Signal Simulator, and I would just sit there eating a quesadilla that I made. Oh man, I loved making my own food there too, because I knew exactly how it was being made. I knew if like the meat was bad, then I'd probably get something else, like the bowl or something. With like the, we had this thing called Alejandro sauce, which is uh, basically what you do is if you're at a Chipotle, try it out. It's really good. Get a thing. I think it's um, it's the red, it's the hot salsa. It's the hot salsa. It's just called hot, uh, hot salsa. Put it about like half and then the other half is sour cream and then you mix the two and it's so fucking good dude it's so good it's one of my favorite things i would put that on my bowls all the time i wouldn't recommend doing it on a uh, quesadilla i tried honey which wasn't too bad on a quesadilla but it depends because it's very greasy it can be very messy but if you do it right it's good um on the quesadilla if you do put the alejandro sauce put very little I, I ended up 
making my own quesadillas really good. Like, I was like, I made it exactly how I liked it. Um, I put the right amount of cheese on it and um, right amount of meat on it. I ended up getting really good quesadillas. So I ended up making those really good. Uh, there's sometimes you had those really annoying customers. The rolling a burrito was really hard. Uh, but that's more on like, that's more on like the customer's fault for making, putting too much stuff on there. And then we have we, us having to deal with it. Uh, and they know that. They're completely aware of that whenever they get a burrito at Chipotle. And they're a regular. But I loved getting the quesadilla. I made my quesadilla. I'd always get the Alejandro sauce on the side. And then I'd get my, I'd get a, a thing of queso. And then I'd get some chips. And I'd always, you know, the chips were always really good. Because you always had that salt and um, lime mixed together. And it tastes really good if you have... If the person who's making the chips in the morning is, does, is a good good at making them, then they're, they're fucking good. Um, obviously, my friend Ben made the best chips and also um, cooked the best meat because he knew how to do it. He kind of had a culinary degree. So he knew to cut the fat out of the meat, which was very nice. So then I didn't have any fat in my meat, which was nice. So I could eat it knowing that I wouldn't bite into something really chewy and gross. I hate fat on my meat. I don't like it. It's nasty. Some people like it, but I don't. I hate it. <clears throat> but yeah, that was my, that's what it was the quesadilla or the bowl. And I, usually in the bowl, I got like chicken, uh, the iceberg lettuce. Oh man, the iceberg lettuce and the chicken and the, the corn. Well, I think I put, yeah, I put corn on there. The black beans, the uh, just, it all came together with the Alejandro, Alejandro sauce. Just, fuck, it was so fucking, it just was so satisfying to eat it. And then just, mmm. Mm, that lettuce really brings it together because it makes it so much more filling with the lettuce. But, oh man, it was such a... I loved it. I liked eating it when I would come home after a decent, long, like, hard morning. Because I would like... I like to work in the morning. Um, that's the only time I worked. I worked in the morning. And it was really nice because I got the bag the chips. I didn't have to do a lot of stuff in the back at first. I did have to do dishes every once in a while. And I got a little bit better at that, but... Yeah, I didn't like having to work overtime. There's so many people who work there who would have to work overtime. Some of it really depends on what coworkers you have because if you have good coworkers during your shift, you you can work together. You have good, um, you have good. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fucking, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, synergy. You have good synergy with your coworkers, and everybody's working together, telling everything correctly. It can be. It can be magical, you know? You can get the shit done and you can feel really good about yourself. But if you have the shitty coworkers and you have, the, you have that drama, it really, really runs you down. It really makes the work even worse because you don't have the cooperative coworkers that are going to be good at their job and know what to do, especially when you're new. You really need that cooperation. You really need the coworkers to be nice. You really need everyone to be... Uh, understanding and everything and sometimes you had those cooks that were really really rude i like i get it they want you to be they want you, they they're, they're getting they're the most stressed out the cooks are the most stressed out people in the on in the you know on the job because they have to be constantly cooking they have to be doing everything uh so really doing good call outs is probably the best thing you can possibly do and also just having good coworkers that can be there to help you out when you really need it but yeah it what really ran it down was the coworkers and the lack of training uh cuz my trainer was not that good i had to just learn on the go and yeah doing learning when to call the food and everything was at first a little weird. Like I was like weirded out just calling out the stuff. Because I didn't know exactly how to call it out. And then yeah. <sighs> it was just hard. It was hard. But. You know. That's what happens. And then the next job I had. Even worse. 
less the problem with this was not only it was the combination of the bad it was basically the worst things you could possibly have it was another kind of food place but it was the combination of the worst things you can possibly have at a job um that were wrong it was the wrong stuff about chipotle that was wrong about this one uh decent high it was a good pay it was a good pay for me to get the job i think they were desperate kind of and i get why because store owned places like person who just owns a location like they don't own the brand they just buy the location they buy like the store kind of deal that's how that works um what they did was like <sighs> like okay so not only did it not have good training it didn't ha like i was always working for a little bit before this was right before covid uh hit united states and everything was just getting worse for places with especially food places so what the owner of the place did so the there was the manager and then there was the co-manager or whatever you call him so the manager kind of didn't really train that well especially with sub sandwich places i get that it's like learn on the go but it's really hard to do that like i it, i i think i started working there at the wrong time because what they were doing was essentially having me do prep stuff instead of doing anything food related unless I needed to. And at that moment when I needed to get food related stuff done, I was not exactly prepared because I didn't have that much training on it. And I wasn't being watched on it whatsoever. And so I had to do, I had to multitask even more than before. And we had, the issue with them is that they didn't have enough coworkers working at this at once and the manager was so willing and ready to just throw someone out at a moment's notice if they said anything slightly negative because they were just a little stressed out over the fact that the manager wasn't really good at his job that they would he would just send them out and then we'd have one less person that we needed and then i was just kind of there and they were doing that and so i was good with the register for the most part because that was very i was very familiar with it and then having to get the prep stuff done so it was actually really chill for that point in time because i didn't have to do the main thing itself which was actually making the sub sandwiches for the customers which was really hard for me to get to down and still learn i was still learning i like i had very little practice with it because you're supposed to be fast with it but i don't i didn't rarely know where everything was at all and there were so many things i didn't know so whenever my manager was getting mad at me it's like not even my fault it's the fact that he just sucks at training and there's no training process whatsoever so it was just so fucking annoying and then covid hit and then they made it so there was only two people on the job at once which essentially just was really hard because i had to do my shift but then on top of that no more customers could not come inside customers were so unwilling to want to not go and like they wanted to come inside in order they didn't want to do this online stuff so i had to do the online stuff we had to take the orders from online there's like three different online order systems thrown in the, the it was just very poor management and the management on who was a manager was bad and on one night i was like there was so many people getting food we had one person making the sandwiches we had like 15 backlined orders at once just order order food order f food 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 order order and then you had the people outside who were getting orders so everything was so backed up that people were waiting an hour for their sandwich because not only was i focused on trying to get them up he was yelling at me to get the sandwiches but he was also yelling at me for not getting the things down so he was yelling at me for not doing everything and not being fast enough even though it was like my second or third week working there it was just bang 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 so i was like four like four hours or two two three four hours of torture um for just and just constantly being yelled at to do literally everything and it was just so difficult it was not fun and sometimes the orders may or may not have gotten mixed up 
and then I had to take the orders out, figure out who was getting the sandwiches, which was really hard having to walk out. And then constantly, the hardest part was that the door was being locked. And basically what I had to do is that I had to also watch the door and make sure to slowly shut it or else it would lock. And then he'd have to go out of his way to come over and unlock the door. And he got so mad every single time. And it was just because I'm so literally, I don't know why he couldn't just be understanding for once. It's first time on the job, barely any training. He didn't really train me at all. Everything was going wrong. So much stress. And. Like. There was like. Fucking. A backlog of like five or ten people. No like ten people. Ten people. Some people were like threatening to just. They were just straight up about to leave. And I was just like. I was like convincing people to not leave. Because I was like. <laughs> just like. Hold on, I think we have your sandwich. Okay, I'm sorry. I know you've waited so long. I'm just... It's just, it was so hard. Dude, I just wanted to fucking cry, dude. That was so hard to do. So difficult. And I just... And I was just like, this is the only... This was the job that I was just like, I'm not going back. I'm not even going to put in two weeks. I'm just not coming. I'm not going to come to work anymore. That was the worst shift of my life so far. Like, I have never had so much stress. Like, it wasn't even, like, dear fucking the grocery store that I went to. It was a grocery store I was, like, going to, right? The first job, I would get, like, like, something was going on with my heart kind of stressed. Uh, I was, like, hurting <laughs> kind of stressed. Um, this was, I didn't have that. It was even, it was just stress stress, you know? Like, it was, it wasn't just a built-up kind of stress. It was just a, I'm fucked stress. Like, I've never felt like I am fucked I want to go. I wish I was not here right now. Kind of stress. It was fucked. And I think the manager felt the same way. But instead of just taking it. Like taking in the stress on his own. Like I was doing. Like I was just taking it on on my own. Mentally. Just cut, literally. I, it was so stressful. I just. I just went blank on the whole stress thing. I was just trying to focus as much as possible that I wasn't even focusing on the stress aspect of it. That's how bad it was. I was just... I couldn't even imagine stress. Um, and the fact that... I was scared. I think I was, I was more scared than anything. I was more nervous and scared and sweating from just being constantly yelled at at my manager for going faster at something that I can't go fast enough on because I'm not only making shakes, I'm not only putting receipts on the thing, he's making the sandwiches, and I'm not only, I'm doing more than he is, but I know for a fact that I would be fucking up the sandwiches, and I don't want to fuck up the sandwiches because if I fuck up the sandwiches, it would be easier for us to just do, like, I don't know, man. It was just terrible. And another issue with him is how he was managing things was that he was giving away free things way too often uh, to try to uh, like get customers to come in. You know, it's just oh. that was terrible. It was I would not want anyone else to ever have to do that because it was bad. It was so bad. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like thinking about it. Uh, I refuse to put it on my resume now. <laughs> Working there. I was, I think I was only there for like two or three weeks. I'm just, no. And I didn't even show up to like do like a two week, like I'm, I'm putting in my two weeks kind of thing. No, I did not do it for this job. I, I just didn't show up. Because I don't think I don't think the manager deserved for me to walk up to him the next shift. I don't even know what he was gonna do to me. 
I was probably expecting him to next shift immediately fire me <laughs> and tell me to go home. But yeah, no. I'm not even going to think about it because that was that was terrible. How they designed the whole thing was so anti new person and I was I just joined at the worst time because I had no preparation or experience prior and there was no training prior. So there was no way for us to predict this was going to happen. And for me to accidentally be put into that was just terrible. Dude, not good. Not fun. So that was like my last job for a bit. And then I started, I worked at Walgreens. And it was like the best job I had since. <laughs> since uh, my first job I've ever had. Well, actually, I guess you could say like the bookstore was also fine too. But it was the best job that paid a decent, like, a little bit more money than before, you know, I could have. So, yeah, Walgreens is good. Uh, what was nice about it was that, well, first of all, I was very familiar with the register. So I was able to get right into it. <laughs> right then and there, I was able to get into it. There was a tiny, there was like one hiccup I had. And it was because I, it was a misunderstanding with the co, with my manager because how he was wording me to put things up was in such an indirect like he looked at me in a way where it looked like he was just joking i could not tell at all i thought he was just joking so i walked off he was like hey can you put these things up and I, he was like saying in such a jokingly way i was just like <laughs> no i'm fine thank you though i'm gonna go now because i thought he was just joking i thought that was like oh yeah no, the people tomorrow will do it right or something like that Obviously, I got gradually better at that. I think the hardest part about that job was constantly having to move, I guess, and then also bend down, like bend down, get down on the ground to put things up and things. I think that's the hardest part. Um, everything else is fine. The cash register was fine. By like 5 p.m., everybody was just gone. There was like nobody at the, you know, Walgreens or whatever. So it was very nice to just be able to get the other things that I have to do get done. Like, I had to put tags up, take tags down, etc. It was really hard. Well, it wasn't hard. I'm sorry. It was just a lot to do that other people weren't doing. Because I'd do the work, and then the next morning, whenever it's my shift, I'm working in the afternoons. The next, the next day, I'm coming to my shift. The people in the morning haven't done anything. They literally have gotten nothing done. They've just been doing the cash register. And I only have to stay at the cash register for like one hour or two, which is completely fine. Like the busy I had at a Walgreens was nothing near the busy I've ever had at a grocery store or any other place prior to that, hands down. It was so just not stressful that it was more melancholy than anything. And it was nice. And most people were just nice old people. And nice old people are pretty nice, you know? Although I will say the shitty part was definitely the, um... Was definitely the, uh... Whenever I had to ask people for their ID for alcohol when they're clearly not, you know? And they just happen to forget it. Or when people put you in a stressful situation where they can't afford something or something happens and i'm have to de i have to deal with it i did learn i i was starting to learn cigarettes though that's one thing that people come and get a lot it, but yeah a lot of people who go to walgreens they completely expect people to ask for their id so it's actually pretty nice i learned to just ask people for their id regardless it didn't matter so it's pretty nice Is that you behind me? What? Huh? What? No? Are you in my house right now? <laughs> Someone asked me, is that you behind me? Nah, no. I'm just... <laughs> I'm in my house. <laughs> that was funny though. 
but yeah i can i have a friend who's been working at walgreens for a long time and i can completely see why he still works there because it's actually really really nice and especially if you have really good coworkers, like it, again it really depends on the coworkers. the one thing that is slightly annoying is that i wish my coworkers did a lot more obviously they're doing a lot behind the scenes that i probably don't know but there's other things like putting things in the front if there's someone at the cash register because i was almost always the lead cash year essentially where i was the only one at the cash register so i almost never could have time to get the other stuff because i had to put things up as well so i almost never really had time to get that done and i was still learning the path of everything and all this stuff and there was so much uh you know that i was still kind of learning um but i was getting i got really good with it pretty fast um, pretty decent. I'm, I'm sure I could even be even better um, enough to where I wasn't still. I'm still a little f icky, sh finicky on the um, the photo booth still because that's a whole nother department that I don't even know how that works. And there's like a whole other thing that you have to do that's a little bit weird and just kind of like I don't know how to do this and I don't want to mess it up and I don't want to screw anything up. So I'll just like you know. There's like this thing where like you can send money to people across the world system, which is weird, and I don't even know how that works. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh. Also, the training process was really long and not really that good. Uh, it was just uh, they s put you on a website, and then they they expect you to read a bunch of just stuff. And they just expect you to do that. And I'm just like, I just went ahead and I just, I just skipped everything. I didn't even read the majority of it. I just pretty much skimmed and skipped everything that wasn't a video. Because fuck that, dude. There was so much that you had to just read and look at. It was a lot. I don't want to ever have to do that again, if I'm going to be honest. Because <laughs> it's actually a lot. And it's just a pain in the ass. And the process of just getting started was a pain in the ass. But when I finally got to just sit at a register, I was just in my element getting it done. And man, was this an easy register to learn because it was nowhere near. It's nowhere near something as complicated as the battle tank of a grocery store cash register. <laughs> like easily. You had like a peel you look up system that you had to memorize and learn and there was codes for fruits and vegetables that you had to memorize there's so many things you had to learn and remember that it was just a lot of work to do you know just so much work so much work to learn things and it, that's the reason that makes me wonder why do people treat people in like you know like grocery stores or just retail or anything like that in general just like shit they just treat them like shit because they had one bad experience with a coworker at one time. Doesn't mean that they're all the same, you know. But that's with life, I guess, right? Uh, oh yeah, fucking. But yeah, no, it's a good thing. I think I said this earlier, but it was a good thing I don't. I'm not playing Death Stranding, you know, as like a full like actual thing it's just more just like whenever i feel like streaming the game so i can actually play it because i don't i feel like if i'm gonna play death stranding i might as well stream it because it kind of sucks and i don't want to play it on like I, I i physically won't play it unless i'm streaming it because then i have an excuse to play it i guess and that's with most things now i guess it just is kind of funny this is um this is not this is a uh, burnout too it's kind of, it always sounds like, um, it sounds like, what do you call it? What's that one game? Silent Hill. Sounds like Silent Hill. What's going on? I was pinged on Discord. Oh, whatever. Wow. <laughs> okay. This is a just chat issue, so I don't I don't care. I don't have to be 
cool and just constantly talk, right? Everyone does podcasts now. It's not like any any of this is special other than you just get my perspective on things, I guess. Ugh, everyone. Fuck it. Too mad did a podcast does a podcast now, I guess. And he's just the most whacked out person, I guess. Which is interesting. But uh, but yeah, no, um, Death Stranding. Um, another reason why is, like, no one watches. And same with just streaming lately, huh? I've been, I've been doing the whole... I, I guess my channel's going through the whole reverse psycho process again, where I go back to no one watching again, huh? Because, again, it's not like it really matters on what day I'm streaming, it just happens to be on when there's just a bunch of people who are willing to click on my streams, which is just crazy. Like, I agree. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, the, uh, I think there's a doppelganger running around trying to kill me. Anyways, I'm not even gonna elaborate on that. Yeah, it's just so weird because, like, you'd expect, maybe it's just all dependent on whether or not someone likes that. Because that's just how we work, right? I do that all the time. Every single day, I'm just like, eh, I don't feel like watching this. So I just leave. But at least at that point in time, it's just like, there's already like thousands of people. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'm obligated to have to watch them. And I guess that's similar to me. Like, people don't feel like they're obligated to have to watch me every single day. But it's just so interesting that, like, last week we had, like, a couple people in here in the just chatting. But now this week, all of a sudden, it isn't. There's nobody. It's And that's been the whole thing for about an hour now, which is crazy. And I guess, to, I guess this week's just kind of, well, I guess you could say kind of this week. Uh, it's just completely dependent on if people want to pop in or not and game dependent as well and just topic dependent because like if this is like a specific game there's only there's certain games that people will pop in to see but if it's a specific game and you know there's not that many people playing it then it'll get attention but if it's not a specific game and it's something completely out of the ordinary no one will want to touch it or at least if you're a nobody, right? So, like, if I were to play Club Penguin tomorrow or something like that, if I were to just suddenly play Club Penguin, probably no one would watch. People would probably click on it and be like, oh, Club Penguin, I remember that, and then leave. Because I'm not, like, anything important. I'm not, like, a anybody like a Gold or XQC or Pokimane or anybody like that. I'm not those people. You know? I'm not those kind of people, so that there's not really, you don't have any kind of background on who I am or what I do or anything about me. So some people just don't like that. And like um, Super Gamer once said on the Resident Evil thing, I think he said that it was. I think it was on Resident. I don't even know if it was if I was streaming during this, but he said something along the lines of because then my they will read my message along the lines of basically that. So people are willing to watch smaller people because then it'll get attention. And um, Asmongold did a really good video recently talking about a parasocial relationship. It's a really good video that I think everybody needs to watch if they are a viewer of some kind of person. Um, because a lot of people have this idea that we're friends, like my viewers are my friends. Which, in when you're a smaller streamer, you definitely can build a relationship with your viewers easily. Because they pop in and they say hi or whatever, and then you slowly build that relationship. But what's weird is that you have some people who just aren't, you know, they, they, they're kind of like that. And, you know, it's just sometimes you can, like, what he went through was that he was, he thought that, like, 
everybody was his friends who was watching him. But then whenever something happened or whatever, then they were just kind of being kind of asshole-ish. Whenever he wasn't being good at Dark Souls, he just, they turned on him in a way that made him feel kind of betrayed because he thought that they were friends in some aspect. Which is kind of weird because that doesn't really exactly talk about his whole idea of a parasocial relationship. Because those people weren't acting like friends, they weren't looking to be your friends. If they're willing to act like that, immediately when you're playing bad at Dark Souls, they're clearly not watching you to be friends. It's you that are looking at them to be friends. And I think that's what he was trying to go for when he was trying to say it. But it just kind of sounded like it was the viewer's fault rather than the him fault. Which he did later on, but like when his overall story made it sound like before that, it made it kind of sound like, oh, it's the viewers. The viewers are kind of, have like this idea that, you know, uh, the streamer is their friend. Which he was talking about half the stream, and then in his instance, it was him thinking that the viewers were his friend. So it was just kind of weird how he kind of said it in that video, but I kind of get what he was trying to go for. So like, obviously, like Super Gamer, he was a viewer of mine for a very long time. He would pop in, but he's slowly becoming a friend of mine. Which is uh, kind of cool. He's a, a pretty cool guy, I guess. You know, I didn't actually believe he had autism, but he actually does have as Asperger's, from what I understand. I guess. I, I don't know. May I? I could probably see that. But if he actually does, then you know, I don't see it. <laughs> I I've never I never even noticed any kind of weird disability issue with him. Probably maybe he takes medication. I don't know. But I never noticed anything. So if he does, then. I, it's not even noticeable to me. But, yeah. And I feel like eventually I'm gonna have to take that turn, right? I'm gonna have to eventually take that turn to only more focusing on being the entertainer rather than the person to talk to or, you know, just chat with. Because I, it's hard to read people's messages once you have enough people chatting at once, right? And also it, it gets distracting for me because I can't read and watch play the game at the same time it's too hard for me to do that so at some point I'm gonna have to stop reading all the time the chat if it's gonna take too much of my attention away so this is probably a good time to probably so I feel like this just chatting thing might help with that just a tiny bit but I don't want to have like I'm gonna have to change that at some point with just being entertaining rather than being your guys' friends I guess eventually but then i feel i feel like some people like that aren't gonna feel like they want to watch anymore because they'll feel like they uh they'll feel like oh he's gotten too big for me i'm gonna go now and then i'll feel like whoa wow i didn't know you need to be an asshole about it i thought that we were friends i apparently it's just because i'm not giving you attention anymore therefore i'm not your friend anymore apparently or you shouldn't watch me because i'm not giving you the attention you want but i i agree i don't think i think people people clearly from what super gamer said it's very clear that people want attention and again with the weird follow unfollows thing that i've talked about many times on here now where people follow just to see their name pop up on the stream or something so then they can get the attention or you say their name hey thanks for the follow then they unfollow you know again it's for the attention right uh and it's it's that's why i stopped saying hey thanks for the follow this person you know so it's just kind of like it's just it's just like it's just i don't want to have to give people like what they want if they're going to use it for their own personal reasons because it is a little annoying because it's just wasting breath it's wasting my time just giving you the kind of attention you want if you're not going to give me anything in return right like i'll have people pop into the chat and then they'll just be like they're they're really cool people to talk to they say like some cool things but then i never get to see them again because they didn't follow or they don't want to i guess they don't want to feel they don't feel like they want to rewatch my content because obviously the following means that they'll know when I'm doing content again right so the fact that I'm probably never seeing them again just kind of sucks because then I'm just like oh man 
I put in all that effort to talk to you and give you attention, and you don't even give anything to me in return, other than, I guess, a view is nice. It's always nice to have views, but you're not gonna come back, are you? So, it just kind of feels like I just wasted my time doing- giving you exactly what you wanted for no payoff for my own personal game, which I- that's the point. I'm trying to get- this channel's trying to grow. That's the point, right? This whole thing's trying to grow. I'm trying to get this to grow. I'm playing this like a business. So, I gotta, you know, get it to grow. And obviously, I'm not doing a really good job because I'm playing games that, like, not a lot of people know. And that's another thing I've noticed. I don't know if it's gonna change over time. But as I'm playing through Shinmu, the first time I played it, the first episode of, of Shinmu 2, um, got like no one watching the entire stream. I played it for like five, five hours. And I was like, wow. Only like 20 people popped in, didn't even say anything. There's like one person who's a returning viewer of mine, which I know the name of, by the way. Thank you, the guy. Um, for popping in. It's nice to have you come in and say hello and talk to me and you know It's nice to have people come in and say stuff, but again, you know, it's not like we're friends It's not like everybody who's watching you is gonna be my friend. It's just it's just nice to see a friendly face Well friendly text, but you get what I mean figure of speech but It's nice to have people recurring people pop in because you know that means that you're doing a good job at what you're trying to do business-wise and I guess if those people are willing to come in to watch you play any game then that's really great there's a streamer i watch who plays any game and it's just like well this game doesn't look interesting to me so i might as well not watch and that's the mentality that a lot of people have like if i play scp containment breach all of a sudden oh all of a sudden everybody's watching because i'm playing a game that they like for once you know and it, i don't necessarily like it Asmongold wants to play different games, but he gets so much shit for playing different games that he's like, well, what's the point? Like, I'm not, it's not helping my business. Obviously, I'm going against that and playing the game anyways, and sometimes it kind of pays off. But, like, with Shinmu, for some reason, the first couple episodes or a couple parts didn't get anyone. And then, like, in between, like, midway through the game, all of a sudden, like, I was getting people watching, which is really weird to me. I don't know why, um, but I guess it's just people, sometimes people follow along with the series, sometimes people don't. Um, I mean, I've been playing it for my own sake, like, that's the issue, like, if I'm gonna be playing through a game, I'm doing it for my own sake now, rather than for the sake of the channel, which, if I was doing something for the sake of my channel, you'd be seeing me playing Roblox, uh, SCP Containment Breach, SCP Secret Laboratory, um, VR chat every single day if I was doing it for the channel and I wouldn't be happy I would not be happy and doing a transition out of that would completely kill my channel probably or at least kill it by a huge amount if I suddenly decided okay I'm not gonna play the same sick like three fucking things over and over again anymore I'm tired of doing this I want to try something different because it's actually different but you can't have that sometimes because people aren't willing to watch that, right? It's not like something that people are willing to watch, so. And same with like doing the editing videos thing. Someone gave me the idea to just make videos from my streams and edit them down. You know how hard, like they're, they're giving the suggestion like it's the easiest fucking thing in the world. You know how hard it is to sift through hours of footage just to find like 10 minutes worth of good stuff going on for no payback? I did this for like two or three games. Um, Battle Block Theater, Postal, and I think something else. And there's like no payoff. There's like none. Completely pointless in doing that. Similarly to like just uploading it, at least just uploading the full stream. You know? At least then, there's like a person who's like, hey, you know, I might watch that. But it, even then, it's like, well, I'm not even putting that much effort into it. I'm just uploading the full stream. Therefore, it's going to be easy for me to just fucking upload it, get it done, and then move on with my life, right? Sometimes you can't do that. But sometimes you can. And, I mean, like, it's just it just makes life easier for me to just do that. So I've been doing that a lot more recently. I haven't gotten the last couple of episodes yet. I was working on... Um, I was working on... Excuse me. Uploading part four of Shenmue, the first game. 
to YouTube today, but then I was just like, okay, I'm gonna just stream me playing a game just nonchalantly without, like, any effort put into it, you know what I'm saying? So I decided, okay, I'll just do that, you know? But, um, yeah, I, I did that, and then, you know, whatever. Uh, so, I, I will, I, I'm probably not gonna play through. Like, some sometimes whenever I do those streams, I'm not gonna put any kind of effort into them. So if you wanna pop in, that's fine. I'm more just doing it because I'm bored. <laughs> like, I was, I was just bored this whole week because of spring break, so I just decided, okay, I'll just, you know... I'll just go ahead and just random do a random stream without like any kind of announcement just kind of play a game that i feel like playing for a long period of time like death stranding i guess even though the game fucking kind of sucks <laughs> it's like they don't know what they're doing with the game so far like i don't get what they're trying to do at least like with at least with like whenever you play like middle gear salad or something you actually have oh i'm gonna have to actually mute that uh, there's muted audio on that. Okay. I was just looking at the last stream I did. I guess there was, like, copyrighted audio, so I'm gonna have to delete the stream. So, bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs> there goes that. Rip. But, yes, I did do a stream earlier today that was, like, four hours. Little to no payoff, but whatever. Fuck it. It's, it wasn't even supposed to be important to the stream, anyways. But, uh... But, yeah. I, I, I guess... Sometimes, you know, again, you know, it's all on what you do, I guess. It's all, it all is timing on when you, what day you play it, what game you play, and who's willing to pop in and say something, or just watch, you know? Especially for, like, smaller people who literally have no following. And someone, a, a moderator of mine, who's also a real-life friend that I see pretty much every week, he was just like, you know, you have to, Dalton, he's the one who suggested me to do the edited videos kind of deal, which has done nothing for me, as far as I know. So it's been a complete waste of time. I don't even know if I, could, if I should keep doing it. I'm going to probably do it if I feel like, oh, I'll, uh, this was decent. I'll, I might do that. But if not, I'm just going to say no. No, I'm sorry. But he gave me that idea. He's also the person who said, you're going to, you're not going to get anywhere because... You're nobody. You, you don't have, like, any kind of following on YouTube or anything like that, so no one's gonna bother with you. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm doing just fine now. It's just really, really hard because I've been doing it for two years now. Almost two years now. I like to say two years because this pretty much is two years, but I've been doing this two years now. I, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm almost at 200. That's pretty good. You know, for two years, I've been I've been doing this thing almost. No, I'd say like I've been doing this now every single day because I actually can. But at the time, I was doing it a decent amount. You know, so I'd say I'm doing fine. It's just gonna take a very long time, and some people are. There's a lot of people who are way too impatient, and that that curve that curve I, I wouldn't even say it's a learning curve i don't even know what to call it it's like a content creator curve of getting somewhere with it is really really high that most people are just going to give up and most people do some people just kind of sometimes put in a video like they'll do like a stream and they'll be like oh I, they expect it to go higher than they really want it to like they'll, they'll be like oh this is not going to get anything but in reality they really want it to do really good it happens with everybody uh but most of the time, that's not going to happen. You know, most people, they don't even care about me, right? Most people, they're just going to be like, oh, cool. Look, it's a person. Okay, I'm bored. I'm going to go. And that's pretty much everyone. And everyone I've mentioned this to, everyone just laughs it off. Because it's just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yep, that's me. Ha, 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 ha. And it's just like, wow. I mean, doesn't that make you feel kind of shitty, right? I mean, like, if you're going to be a follower or if you're going to support me, at least do it in some way like i've said in my celebrating two years video that i made just support me <laughs> you don't have to do that much i mean like if you can't sit around and watch all the time at least like it, especially if you're new here you've never seen me before pop in a follow and then maybe pop in again some other time uh, whenever i'm playing a game that interests you 
in some way or another. Like, I'm sorry I'm not a fucking titty girl or, like, a female or anything like that or a popular person on the internet or, or some famous celebrity. I'm just some guy who's been doing this for a good long time who just hasn't had the, um, who has not been fortunate enough in others more than others because they're doing the same thing that I'm doing, but I guess they're more fortunate than I am. So, it's really helpful when people want to support. But it, it hurts whenever you, people do say that kind of things because then it puts that a pressure of people, it'll put that pressure of, of like, on people who like feel like, oh, now I'm too pressured to do anything. It's like, wow, okay. I mean, like, I'm not trying to force you to do it. I'm more implying that you do something to support me if you really, really want to help in any way rather than do nothing and maybe pop in every once in a while. How about you share my content? You know, if you're not going to do it, share it, right? Share, oh, I think this person's funny. Share me. Share me on Reddit. Share me on YouTube. Share me on Twitter. Share me on anything, right? You want to support me, do so. Right? If you can't sit around and watch me every single day, that's completely understandable, but I need I need people to be reoccurring for me to feel like I'm doing something with this, you know? I like having support. And I like talking to you guys, you know? I like uh I like doing things for you guys. I'm I'm here to entertain. And when there's no one here to entertain, who am I entertaining to? A chair? <laughs> I'm, I'm entertaining to nobody with almost no benefit, right? I'm, it's, I'm doing this for no reason. I spent thousands of dollars on equipment and things like that for nothing, right? I'm doing, I'm, I'm spending more money on this. I've spent more money for the sake of the streams than I do on myself. And I've spent some, like, I'm not even joking. I, I've gotten very little payoff with how much I've spent on this stream. And it just, it's just fucking sucks <laughs> it is it, it literally is i'm putting so much effort into this and like you know that that really that's why it gets to me that's why i you know i it can get to you sometimes is uh that cycle of you have no one then you have some people then you have this big gap of just a bunch of people for some reason out of nowhere without explanation and then it repeats, then there's no one again. And it's just a repeating cycle for a very long time, right? I'm just repeating this cycle. I was playing through Resident Evil 5 with Super Gamer again. First time we played it. First stream we did it, nobody, no one. There was like one or two people and there were just people who Super Gamer's friends was just, har he was just harassing his friends to pop in um, the second time. We actually had fucking people watching, which was weird, right? You actually had like five people, four or five people just watching consistently for the long, the whole, almost the whole time. Or at the height, I think it was like seven people. And I'm just like thinking, what the fuck happened? We're like halfway through the game already and people are just all of a sudden popping in. So it's just something like that. It's just, it's just, I guess it's just a time and a place sometimes and the game that you play, like I said. But again... How many of those people actually followed? How many of those people decided, I'm going to share this content? How many people decided, oh, I'm going to clip a funny moment that happened while I was watching this? None of them. I don't know why. I don't know what their intention was. I don't know if they were just there just to watch the game itself and then move on. That happens with YouTube videos all the time. People will just, there's like, oh, this video interests my subject. Okay, that was a fun video. I'm not going to subscribe. I'll like the video. All right, bye. I'm never coming back. That happens all the time. And that there's a reason why people literally say all the time in every single video, hey, if you liked what you saw, share the video, like the video, subscribe, come back and watch my other videos. It's, if they feel like they have to uh, mention it, the reason why is because most of those people who are watching those videos that are specific subjects, they're not coming back. They're only there to watch that one specific things and that effort that that person put into is only going towards that one video that they did. So, there's a reason why people say it in every single video or advertise stuff or whatever. You see it happen all the fucking time. And, um, 
I don't know if I'm gonna have to do that or not. I don't want to do that. I don't want to just randomly say midway through the stream, hey, if you guys are liking what you're watching, go ahead and um, follow. I, I like there's a reason why people are saying that shit because people are kind of kind of dumb uh, not to be offensive towards anybody listening to this. If there's anybody because I'm just seeing one viewer which that one viewer is a bot. So if there's anybody who happens to watch this afterwards in like the year 2023 somehow if I for some reason have uploaded these in the future on YouTube, I don't know. But yeah. It's just, for me, it's just a recording. It just sucks that I'm, do the whole point, the whole point of a live stream is that you're live streaming to people who are potentially going to watch you and maybe come back for more, right? You, people follow you. The whole point of a following system is that people think that following is going to do something, right? They'll just be like, oh, I'll follow. That's my contribution, contribution to the channel. Okay, I'm never coming back. Because I'm not playing Resident Evil 5 for the third time in a row, right? I'm not playing it every single fucking day. Even if I've beaten it multiple times, people will just come back to that. Like, I don't get it. I don't get the concept of, oh man, I'm going to follow them, pop up for one stream, and then never come back again. That happens so many times. People just think that that's going to help. It doesn't help all the time. Having followers doesn't always help. I've already got an affiliate. Followers aren't my goal anymore. My goal now is to have reoccurring viewers, because if I don't have reoccurring viewers, I can't get partnered. Which would be really, really cool to have be partnered someday, but you don't get that. You don't get that uh, for a very long time. I feel like I'm almost at my peak, and it's just, it doesn't feel like a peak right now. I mean, it could be better. I'm, I'm getting there. It's just that a lot of people who follow me and are reoccurring don't actually really want to watch me right they want to support me right if you're gonna follow me you're gonna follow me to watch me right no that's apparently not how it works in this world you follow because it says oh you do it's a funny little glowing button that just says oh if i follow you then i'm doing my part no you aren't the whole point of a follow is that you're following my content so then you know when i'm doing content more content right so my 191 followers none of them showed up there's like one person who showed up today and they're just, they just popped in to do a, a meme, a, a funny meme, because it says AMA, right? And I could be doing, I could complain about this, like, all fucking day, because it's just, it's just a, a reoccurring issue of smaller people, because a lot, this is where people give up. There's a reason why a lot of people don't end up doing this, or get anywhere with this, is because it's entirely reliant on the viewer, entirely. There's, there's almost, there's... That's the only luck you have. Like, you have to be so fucking lucky or have a really good personality and just const <laughs> You know, like, you have, like, that really high attitude, just childish attitude mentality on everything. Then maybe people will actually watch. High energy, high, at, at, like, out attitude. Some people like to just watch videos. They don't feel like they're obligated to have to watch a stream. Even though streamers have it way more difficult in terms of entertainment value because you don't have to take time on editing the footage or anything. You have to be entertaining on the spot and also be good at moving things around. Ooh, I'm moving things around. Woo, woo, woo. I'm moving things around. Let's see. Um, but yeah, that's just like, you know, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I'm tr I'm still figuring out a person's algorithm, and I get it. It's literally just laziness, or just they don't feel like it, right? They don't feel like they should waste their time, even though they put enough effort to hit the follow button, which the whole point of it for you to follow is to actually come back to my content at least, you know, every day, perhaps, you know, every time I'm doing a stream, but because I'm not playing a specific game that they like, uh, then there, you know, there's a problem here, there's a problem, you're not playing a specific game that I don't like, therefore, I don't want to watch you. So, a lot of times, it's not even the person, it's more just... 
they don't care about the person entirely at that point. They care about the game that they're playing and how good they are at the game. Because if they're not good, if they're not god tier at the game, I'm not even gonna watch. Okay, I, I if if this person isn't god tier, I'm done. And that's just how it is sometimes. You have to be another thing, another type of people on the internet that people love is the rage people, the people who just fucking go ape shit like a bunch of monkeys throwing their shit at like the mirror or like the wall or the bathroom stalls or whatever right you have those fucking people and those are like probably the more one of the more successful people at, at some point you know to some extent but they also bring out the most toxic people you you notice this a lot with a lot of people who rage all the time they have the most toxic community sometimes um but yeah no fuck dude i i am so just on so low on the spectrum of people who give a shit right like i'm not anybody i'm not a person you have to almost like the only people who are even watching me are people who specifically seek out people with low viewer accounts on purpose so then they can get attention it's for their own personal gain that people usually join smaller streamers it's not any kind of indicate it's it's the game people who just randomly follow you and never come back they're they're there for the game and to get attention that's it most of the time these there's probably like i'd say 185 people uh, 185 of my followers aren't even don't even care about me they don't even watch me probably there's probably some people in here who do and they don't they never talk I'm sorry if I didn't mention you. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm, for some reason, thinking about the people who actually say stuff. If you are one of those people who just pop in, you've followed me for a long time, but you don't say anything. You've never said anything. You just watch me just to watch me. Thank you, by the way. Um, it means a lot to me. Thank you. I, know, I get it that you don't want to talk. I almost never talk in live streams anyways, either. I'm usually the lurker. But if you like to lurk, that's fine, you know? I like I like lurkers because it just means well although it doesn't necessarily know I don't know if they're actually a human being behind that view by behind that one number that I see that's the only kind of indication I have of your any kind of humanity is a single number that is on my stream manager is that single little digit and that's a person from what I'm told even though if I hit refresh there's like, let me see here. There is like two. There's two users, but they're not counted. They don't count, apparently, according to this. These people don't count if they even are if they even are a person. They don't count, according to this. There's the um, moderators, which is Nightbot and Streambot. And one of those viewers from what I understand, is counted, and that's the Streamlabs bot. For some reason, it counts that. Sometimes I have people who are moderators, and they don't even, it doesn't even count them as a viewer. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It is so random, I don't even know if, if I can even trust the view count anymore. I don't know. Because sometimes I'll look at a stream that I've been doing for a very long time, like, you know, like a couple hours, and I see, like, all these users, and there's, like, 10 different users but they're not being counted and it's i it's so hard because you don't know if they're like a view like one of those statistic bots that people have for some reason or make and just put on people for some reason like um commander root for example who the fuck is commander root but they've they have like over like 500,000 view hour things I, you know there's like the weird eyeball the weird eyeball thing i think that's like view hours like how many minutes or something like that i don't know what it is but that thing right they they, they have thousands of them and sometimes i like i just see reoccurring like i don't like i don't want to mention anyone if any of these two people that are in my users sh thing whatever it is if you are actually a human being I, I don't know because <laughs> again it's just a number and the only number it says is one viewer and most of the time that only comes up after my my discord bot makes an announcement that I'm streaming that's the only time it comes up and then it just is one viewer the entire stream 
or well, at least one viewer every stream. But I don't know if that's a human. I'm pretty sure that's a bot. But then you have people in there. I don't know if they're human. It's so, it's like, it's like, all I have is a number. So it's like really hard to associate myself with a number. <laughs> and that's what the world we live in. We live in by, we live in the world by numbers now. To the point where if this, no, this isn't like getting enough numbers. Like I'll, I'll go to my Instagram. Let me look at my last post I've ever made on Instagram. Let me see here. My last post had... It was a picture of an ultra rare Oreo. Two people liked the picture. How many of those people viewed swung past that? Like you go to a video, right? Let me go. Let me find a video. Sixty-two views, and it only has eight likes. Eight likes from people. Sixty-two views. How many of those people didn't even recognize my existence of my two hundred and thirty-five followers on Instagram? First of all. Why are you following me? If you're not going to watch me, you don't have to follow me. The whole point of following, I've already made my affiliate goal. I'm fine. The reason why I don't do videos on YouTube anymore at all, like I used to do them all the time. The only incentive I had was that the potential that I could make a bunch of money because I could p put ads on my videos. Now there's no incentive because I know no one's gonna really watch my content, but there's all, there was always that chance that someone could watch my, like a bunch of people would watch my videos and then I'd get a bunch of money from it, right? I'd get a decent amount of money, at least, kind of, not really. But then whenever they changed their algorithm, they completely removed my ability to make money on my channel, which also subsequently also killed my channel as well because I think if you have ads on your channel, then your videos go out to more people. But since I don't have, my channel doesn't make any kind of monetization whatsoever, the only reason it, probably ever has ads if there even is is because there's like a copyrighted audio or music in there that's it um but you know you have uh, that because i have an incentive on here until they change the algorithm to where i have to consistently have three viewers then i have an incentive to keep streaming which is just the potential to have a bunch of people suddenly pop in which is for some reason a dream that I have where just suddenly I have a bunch of people watching just out of nowhere even though that's not how it works everybody has that dream right everybody has that ideology in their head whenever they start streaming and they're like oh yes the the idea of being something when in reality you're gonna be a nothing unless you put in a huge huge amount of effort unless you're you already have established an established uh like personality or just person on the internet that everybody knows already then you can just be dunky and you have you can just use the shitty hyper x cloud x hyper cloud hyper cloud x2 microphone which is really shitty and put little to no effort into your streams and you can still get thousands of people watching you because you're you're an established figure on the internet meanwhile there's tons of people on twitch who get almost no recognition because they're a nobody. They're, they're not an established person. So they have to really put in the effort. And it's really hard because you have all these really high tier people who have been fortunate enough. Completely swamping you in views. And there's very little chance that you're going to get anybody watching you at that point. Right? Unless you're a girl. <laughs> We've established this. Like, if I was if I was a female, it would be a completely different story. I'd probably maybe be at, like, 400 followers by now. Two years in. 400, 500. If I was a girl. Uh, not even joking. It's just, it's just sad. Hey, that's how it works in the world. It's just, oh, it's the ability to think that you could have this person or something. Or you could have a connection with a female. Right? <laughs> But that's just how it is, I guess. That's just how the world works on the internet. And, you know, even though I'm completely self-aware about everything I do on the internet, completely self-aware, and I know I do it with intention because I know that if I don't, it's going to not really help me at all. Like, everything on my Twitter, on my... This is the only time I'm ever really professional, is on my Twitch. 
Or YouTube, maybe. Yeah, I guess you could say YouTube, too. YouTube and Twitch, which are the only things that, like, have some kind of semblance of something going on. Um, which, to me, is a lot. Like, whenever I say something like, oh, I had five people watching. You know how many streams I go where I'm only having maybe one person watching? That is a huge amount. Right? Like, one person watching, I'm like, oh, I have someone. I have someone to be entertaining to. I have someone to give me jokes to play off of, and then I can joke about it. And then I can do all these things. And the more people I have, the more I have more content to go off of. And whenever I have, like, tons of people watching, I'm at my best when it comes to making entertainment, entertaining stuff. I'm at my best when I have someone. But I'm at my worst when I have no one. Because I have nothing to go off of. I have nothing. Right? How many people in this do you think... By the way, you see that chat right there. Every single one of my streams, I have a chat. And if you ever watched the VOD, you'd almost never even know that I had a chat box pop up while I'm streaming. Because if you're watching the VOD, no one's <laughs> texting. <laughs> And there's, like, almost no one watching. You can watch my Shinmu the first couple episodes. Like, I'd say, like, the third... Yeah, the third episode. No one popped in the entire stream. You could have watched that and not even known that there was a chat box in, in, on the stream that pops up when I'm streaming. You could have not even noticed that. There's a chat box right here. I literally might as well not even have it there. Because it just makes it look sadder. Because <laughs> no one's talking. There's no one here. And it, it really frustrates me how often I had, um, I had to actually take, I had to actually tell Super Gamer while we were doing the Resident Evil 5 after the first part. I was like, hey, shut up. Stop mentioning that no one's watching. Alright? That makes people uncomfortable. And it does. But this is my just chatting thing, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't care. Um... I can just say it whenever I want because I have this is my permission. I, it's under my own permission. I ha, I'm I can say this because I'm the one who owns the channel and does everything. If you're a person who's like a, a guest or something on here and no one's watching, they're obviously not experienced with not, not they're not experienced with streaming. And not only that, they're not experienced with streaming as a nobody still, right? I'm still no one. I'm still just, I'm not even a face. So they don't understand. They, they're not used to not having anyone popping in. And whenever there's a couple people, they have to harass the people who are watching. And everybody who's done streaming for a little bit completely knows that you're not supposed to harass the lurkers because it makes them uncomfortable. It puts a lot of pressure on the viewers, on the people who are watching. But I hope that what I've said so far in the stream, you understand <laughs> my side on it. If you're a lurker, you understand my side on it. Um, but that's just my side. Even though, like, I'm I'm willing to do it, considering the issue with I I wish I've been so unfortunate that I could have been someone already if i was older and i had equipment i could have been someone way earlier if i had the right equipment but you see because i was a kid had no money and i didn't have any equipment so i couldn't make videos properly until one or two years ago that's how long I've been going. Well, then again, I have for a good bit on my YouTube channel. I had a shitty, like, $100, maybe $70 laptop that could barely hold storage. So I was literally using all my storage to edit videos. And then I'd have to immediately delete everything. That was a struggle for a very long time. And... Even then, at some point in some time, the only thing I could have to actually make videos was my PlayStation 4. And that was like in 2016. So it was only like one or two years ago where I had a computer 
that could actually edit videos and stuff. And by now, like even by now, completely pointless. There's no point in trying anymore on YouTube. Even, even with no incentive. I have literally, again, no incentive to make content because there's no monetary value there. Like if I were to put in a bunch of effort, I know that I'm not going to get any payoff. Because one, it's not monetized, which means two, it's not gonna get it's not gonna get recommended to people as easily as if it was monetized. But I can't get my videos monetized if it doesn't get any views. But because I can't get it monetized and I'm not getting the views, I don't meet the requirements to be able to get the videos monetized to begin with. So I'm at a stuck. I am stuck on the channel. I am completely stuck. There's nothing I can do. And it's just so unfucking fortunate that I was so young. I, I had this dream when I was young. I was like, man, I want to be a YouTuber when I grow up. And I had that dream. I was just like, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber. I always had that dream. And I could never do it. Because I was never fortunate enough to be able to get it. And I tried. I tried. I tried getting an HD PVR. Which didn't work out. And really early on, I didn't even really have that a computer, and I didn't know how it worked properly, but I would probably figure it out. Um, I had an, a Windows XP computer for a very long time. The only, like, I didn't really have much in terms of technology. I didn't even get, I didn't even have enough room for a PC, if, even if I wanted a PC. And the PC I was given at one point was from my grandma, and whoever she had it to, I didn't understand how to do computers properly, but whoever she gave it to, I literally couldn't even connect to the internet with. So it was a completely pointless computer that I couldn't do anything with. And it was a Windows XP too, by the way. Um, or actually, something like that. But, completely pointless. I was fucked. And it's just sad because I could have gotten something. I could have been so, some of the pioneers. I could have been one of the pioneers of YouTube Let's Players. But I couldn't because I was so unfortunate. And again, because of the string of things. And I, I'm, I'm sure there's probably people... I'm sorry if this makes you uncomfortable. I'm so sorry. But this is just... I want you to get into the mind... Of just someone who constantly tries and gets almost nothing from it. I'm literally risking like school by taking time out of my day to stream because I want to do this. I want this to be this is something I also really like to do and I figured out a passion. I had a passion for it early on when I was streaming on YouTube. We could probably watch an old stream I did but nah. it's like an alien isolation thing but yeah. Sadly, it's just, I'm just unfortunate, I guess. I'm not, I got into this, I'm, I'm getting into this at a bad time, and it just keeps fucking me up every single time. And it's only worse because it just keeps getting, it just keeps getting worse over time, um, making it harder and harder for newer people to get into this. And it's just like, it's like you have to be into it from the very beginning. From the very, very, very beginning, you'd have to basically get into it to get anywhere when you're a nobody. And that's what Darian said. And that, I think that's what he meant whenever he said that. Is he was trying to say, like, you'd have to be somewhere. But he doesn't really realize that I can't get anywhere on YouTube as much as I try. The only way I could really get somewhere is to shit post shorts to get the al my algorithm up. Because I actually made a shorts video. I didn't know what the shorts algorithm was until after I made the Monterey Jack video. Where I just, I was just like, oh, this could be just a random fucking dumbass video where I just say Monterey Jack. I have Monterey Jack. That's it. But, of course, that gets like 500 views by the time I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Literally, it just got, it got like 500 views within like an hour for no reason. And then I was never, I'm never able to replicate that, by the way. Never able to replicate Montgomery Jack video, sadly. Um, because I'm just not fortunate, I guess. <laughs> and that's what drives people to not do this at all. They don't pursue it as a career. 
obviously I'm playing it very safe and getting a degree in something else that kind of interests me, even though it's not entirely something that I want to do for the rest of my life other than streaming and doing videos. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> I just want to do videos and stream and make content, but and be an entertainer, but I guess I can't do that. That's not really a career you can just do easily. So it's such it's a slow burn. It is a really, 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 really slow burn. When I made the video, when I made the celebrating two years video, let me see here. Celebrating two years, I've uploaded it on March 10th, 2021. I think I said I had 183 followers, right? Let me see. We're gonna watch it together. Today is March 10th? 10th? Yeah, March 10th, um, 2021. I think I said 183. And I am a Twitch streamer, YouTuber, whatever. Uh, you probably maybe have seen, you m have not seen my videos. Um, I've been doing YouTube for, since 2016, I think 2015, 2016, and I've been doing this for a long time, even before that, this channel, before this channel, I had another channel that I did, and that was like back in 2009, and those were just really cringy videos, like, uh, Talking Tom, Talking Tom video. <laughs> Was my first Why did I laugh I at the and same time? Happy I said that. Let's Play prior yeah, to play. it blowing up and becoming a huge. Um, I was thing. one of the people who were constantly sharing the content because you see, like at its roots, things share, things get known because people share it, right? How many? The reason why religion is, Christianity is everywhere is because everybody who was into it shared it. They shared it, they showed other people, and other people joined. That's how the world works. That's how things revolve, usually. If you're trying to get something that everybody would know or something, you know, you share it. And that's the, that's the issue, is that no one shares me yet. I'm not lucky enough to have someone share my video on Reddit, which is the... What seems to be the only way nowadays to get something going on on your channel is that someone shares some clip from you on Reddit and then it helps you blow up. And um, I might have to start making my own clips because no one else does it. I have a lot of funny moments that happens, but no one ever clips it. Ever. Because there's no one here. But anyways, I have some really funny moments. I should probably start clipping them um, on my own time. But yeah, I have stuff like that on YouTube uh, even uh, probably even bigger no not not as big as close to I'd say like similarly to uh, Mc fucking Minecraft and not sorry I don't have a I'm not doing a script for this I almost never do scripts I've always done them like um the, any kind of script whenever I really just done what it was called but it was like because one of the people who was doing it with me doing a stream I would come in for someone like me. Like, how do I put it? Most of my streams, almost all of them, 2019. And June 10th, I think? June 12th, back up in October. thing I did on... I have to fucking do that. Like, every single... I really do need any kind of fucking support, dude. I've been Shut fucking up, watching me. this and is not even a part of it. Like, of mine or somebody in a server. Uh, please, if you can, d double the amount of effort that who's Twitch streaming, was, um, into it and everything, uh, and then it, and it had a whole video, I'm gonna, f and then someone was, like, like, in huge trouble, I changed it to, that looked pretty neat, and then that fit, shut up me, I'm gonna on. go with the whole, now it's just kind of, as the whole, uh, and it, 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 it's appealing, theme, theme, I went, I did all that, on, uh, oh yeah, this is me talking that. about my history, on and then Twitch I did the about me section I, and the Discord, but it's pretty much dead. Oh yeah, I went through a lot of effort doing that. Um, doing that. Um, I put a lot of effort into doing the uh, because I, I made it so if you go to light mode, you can actually see like the borders and shader. There's like shading going on with the borders. Um, but if you're in dark mode, you don't really see those. You just see the white part, the the main parts that you want to see. 
so then you have so then both sides have something cool about it whenever you use twitch so light mode you get to see a lot more going on dark mode you, you get to see a little bit less but you can still see what it is you can see what's going on and it looks really nice i wanted to make sure i did that with the black and white thing very similar so then i can appeal to the light mode and dark mode so then it has like that whole system going on um which looks really nice it look it comes out really nice uh i really like it uh <laughs> And I also wanted to make it kind of like look a little like oh look there's a little bell that's like the that's the Discord server have you ever run this? It's the Discord server and then they updated Twitch to have like everything there so I only have like one link to the uh, Discord server that really the only purpose of it if you want to chat in there you can it's just like my reoccurring viewers quotes that will just say random shit sometimes. Some of them are not even reoccurring viewers, they're just people who are from another server who just came to harass me for one stream and then fucked off. They joined the Discord and then fucked off. Uh, yeah. It's just... Streams. Um, a little bit. On it. I was, I was, and then I got Affiliate. Literally just... And everything was just kind of shit. Not streaming every single day. I was just like, you know, just, just, I was just like, you know, up, and then, um, and this might take a this moment, time minute, I'll, so I can focus on Skirk. I was go doing, I can, I feel like just, and just, all been like that, you know what, whenever I can, and so, and so now, December, I think, I don't remember, but, so, no, today fuck. is, Shut even, up. like, just, at, like, toward cramming out to an audience of, it's so fucking hard. Um, it happens sometimes. Look, viewer wise, max of nine. Um, but a max of seven views era because I have people. What the fuck did I two 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 days prior? I, I yeah, it's not like a broken thinking. Um, I'm trying to fucking go through this because I just want to know. I do say the number of how many people I had since the video, so then I can drop comparisons. Um, because. I think it was, we're going to go with 183. I think it was 183. And that was on March 10th. So between March 10th and, and 11 days later, I'm at 91, right? Where are those people that followed me? Where are they? They're not here. I, I would r recognize them. Uh, we have, I got one, two, oh yeah, some of them are just extra accounts, um, that some people made. For some reason, sometimes people just forget their accounts, so then they just refollow me. Um, you have one, two, three. I had three people in total follow me through the, throughout the, no, four people. I had four new f followers throughout the Resident Evil 5 playthrough two new followers which was my best playthrough i've done so far my shinmu playthrough i don't know um and then i had like that one there that one's a newer one he, he comes in sometimes uh this person followed me never heard them speak once i don't know if they're real probably we are they're probably like a lurker what Wachev. Oh yeah, Wachev. I, I think I know who Wachev is. I forget. Luigi. Yay, Luigi. That's always that's a cool name. Duralx. Yep. Classic. Uh, Duralx is um another real life friend of mine. That's another thing. I have way too many like. There's we're not even real life friends. Just online friend. They're like a friend of an online friend I have. I don't even really know them. Uh, that person from a server. That person, which is actually new. Um, yeah. There's so many like, fucking- What did I do to fucking watch me? 100 followers. I- It's not even half of my viewers. I have like- I'm almost at 200 followers. I've been kind of stagnant right now at- I, 180 right now. Um, 183 currently as of this recording. March 10th. I was right. Ha! <laughs> From March 10th to March 2021, I was when I was at 183 for like 
for a good bit. <laughs> I think for a week. <laughs> and I was just literally streaming every single day. Um, and then from now, I was like, how many people is that? 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91. That's like eight people. And none of them have returned to any of my streams. Maybe like a couple times. But wow, they, you don't get those people every, every so often. And again, it's completely reliant on what game you play. Because you don't know what your viewers want. Because they're not here. <laughs> they don't ever tell you anything. You don't know what your viewers want if you're a direct streamer, right? You don't know what they want. The issue with whenever you're not a variety streamer, the issue with it is that you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're playing the same game over and over again. Now, if you're lucky and that game constantly gets updates and ads and sequels, then you're fine. But if you don't, it'll just go to shit after a while. You lose half of your viewership if you try to change up the pace. Right? It's a... It's such a vicious system and cycle. Like, where are those eight people? Where are they? Like, they'll probably pop in, say hi for, like, maybe, like, you know, pop in, say hi, stay in for, like, maybe a minute or two, then they'll just leave. It's because it's not the game. I You'd think, like, what hurts the most is that you'd think that they're there for you, but they're not. No one's there for you in reality. No one, no one, most people who are here, who are here for me, are far and few in between and even those people eventually don't stay for the entire like you know they don't even stay for that long they'll maybe pop in and say hi those are the people that'll pop in and say hi and reoccur but the people who come in for the game they're only going to come for the game they're not coming for you and uh, that's the thing i feel like asmongold missed out on saying is that he completely f missed out on saying something along the lines of people aren't watching you he, he wasn't clear about it, at least. If that's what he was going for, then yes, I agree. People aren't watching you for you. They're watching you for the game. For 80% of them. For a very long time. No one's watching me right now. If they were following me to watch me, they'd be here right now. But there is. Yeah. Anybody who is here and who follows me, they'll pop in. They're like, eh. Leave. And that happens with everyone. Everybody does it. I do it. I, am I being a hypocrite? No. I, 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 well, yes, I am being a, if we're saying like on technical term, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> on a technical term, yes, I am being a very hypocritical. But as a creator, that's a completely different story. I'm, I, as a viewer, it's the same thing. But I'm not talking as a viewer, I'm talking as a creator. As someone who creates content. I'm not talking as the viewer. If it was as the viewer, yes, I do the literally the exact same thing. As a content creator, this is what I expect from my viewers who do watch me. And I wish I got to have the pleasure of having, right? You have the XQC, like fucking 40,000 people concurrently just watching him the entire stream. Like 40,000, 30,000 at the minimum or maybe even 20,000 but no 30,000 at the minimum of his millions of subscribers or followers that he has by the way just reminding you he has a million followers and even at a million he's only hitting like 30 or 40,000 people watching him you, you know how crazy that is that ha more than half of, like 90% of your viewers aren't even watching you whenever they follow you they'll follow you then they'll fuck off I do the same thing I'm literally doing the same thing as a viewer. And the reason why I do it, and this is the fucked up part, is how, um, is how self-aware I am, is that the reason why I do it, <laughs> and the reason why I know I'm complaining, is that I, I'm, I'm complaining about myself at the same time, um, is because, well, one, I like Asmongold a lot. I like him, and I do watch his stuff, but I watch his YouTube channel more than I do watch his live streams currently because the reason why is that I don't really like war uh, like w uh, World of Warcraft I like him as a person and that's why I choose to watch his videos because I get something that's not the World of Warcraft stuff all the time he does the just chatting stuff that's just him reacting to videos all the time so uh, even though I follow him on Twitch I'm only ever really popping in sometimes, depending on 
the subject matter entirely. That's for me, at least. Like, that's the only reason I watch him at times. Even though, like, I'll sometimes watch his World of Warcraft stuff, but I'm not, a, I don't even play World of Warcraft. The only reason I follow him is just, I just happen to follow him for some reason. Um, I don't even, like, like, I just watch his YouTube channel. And I think everybody is completely aware of that, and everybody is completely aware and self-aware of that. They just don't want to admit it. Because I'm sure um, Asmongold does literally the same thing himself that's why he doesn't say it because he doesn't want to be hypocritical and get um harassed about being hypocritical even though you can be hypocritical it's just it's just people are going to use that as an excuse you know it's all about excuses and they're gonna be like well if you're using that as an excuse if you're complaining about this and you literally do what we do then you shouldn't be you shouldn't be complaining about that to begin with as a creator i can just because I do it as a viewer, do what literally you guys do, doesn't make me a hypocrite. It just makes me want better. Because if other people were doing that, why should I? If other people are doing it, then why should I have the incentive to do what they do? If they, if more people were watching me more often, every single time I was streaming or doing something, at least for like maybe like an hour or two hours, that would make me happy enough to be like, okay, you know. But like. As a viewer, if other people aren't going to be doing that, then why should I? Right? It's a crab mentality. Everyone's just going to pull each other down. So, it, it might as well start with you guys. And I'm not like... And again, I literally told you guys, you don't have to watch me. I already said this. You don't have to watch me. At least share my content to people who w are willing to do that. Who are willing to sit down and watch me for an entire stream because they want to watch me they don't want to they don't exactly care about the game itself although the game is very important it's more just watching for the person rather than the, the game right but that's not the case for the most part but there are people out there who will right there's there's really dedicated people who are willing to watch you for the entire stream no matter what game you play i see it happen all the time um, it's just, uh, those people are hard to find, and it's really hard to find people who will come back to your streams, right? And that's just, that's just the delusions of a madman, of a mad streamer who is small, nobody, and is complaining about something that doesn't matter, because I don't matter. I don't contribute anything to society by doing this at all i i'm screaming into a void of nothingness and that's what gets people all the time but again like i said in the video because I, like I, I like i'm a broken record um i'm gonna keep doing it as painful as it is like I'm stabbing myself every single day because I'm wasting money and wasting time on the stream with no payoff for a very long time and I know I am completely aware that I'm going to be doing this five years down the line and then I'll, I'll hit 500 subscribers or followers five years down the line. More than likely I am next year or the year after or the year after up until 2025. So see you in like let me see here if it takes like five years if it takes two years to get 200 and it takes one year to get 100 that means it would take 10 years to get 1000 so i'll see you in 2035 or 36 and we'll probably hit maybe a thousand followers <laughs> Because that's what's going to happen. I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. And I'm probably going to get nowhere with it. And I'm completely aware of that. Yet I still do it every single day. I'm still forcing myself to do it. Because there's that slim, there's that slim, tiny little chance that one, one last score. One last chance. Arthur. That's possible that at any point in that, that time, 
that someone, many people perhaps, will share my content to more people. And then it'll be self-sufficient in growth. Because then there'll be new people coming in because other people recommended me, right? But that's going to be very... <laughs> Even at a thousand people, even at a thousand followers, that's also meaningless. I'll probably, by at a thousand followers, I'll probably be able to stay stagnant at 50 people watching at me at once, which isn't even enough to get partnered. Uh, I think you need 80 viewers um, on average to get partnered. I've done everything that you can possibly do to get partnered except for on average viewers, which is 80. Just such a huge amount. And I hope they don't change their TOS to where I lose my affiliate because I don't want to lose my affiliate. I put so much work into this that I feel like I would feel so destroyed if I lost my affiliate because I put so much work into this for affiliate for them to just rip it away from me would be crushing. It would be just as crushing as it was when they removed... Um, the ability for me to make money on YouTube, which gave me that small sliver of chance, like that hope that maybe one of the videos I put a bunch of effort into will blow up and then everybody it will get like a million views and it'll just, it'll be great. I'll make a bunch of money and then I can finally do something that I can have a passion for and maybe have like a good, decent, huge amount of audience, you know, for whatever, which isn't the case now, clearly. Uh, and Twitch, as well, is slowly becoming the YouTube of streaming, obviously. I mean, it already is, but it's really getting harder and harder. I just wish I was able to do it earlier, honestly. Because if I could do it earlier, I probably would have been better off. Because there would be less people on the website, which means there wasn't as oversaturation, which means that my discovery would have been a lot more easier, and then so on and so forth even when i probably could have joined during it's just in tv era like cow chop or not cow chop sorry creature hub i'm sorry yeah creature hub was around since just in tv i believe and even yeah just man i'm just yeah it just really is so so it just sucks because I'm so aware of my position, and everyone else thinks they know the answer, but they don't. And a lot of people do know the answer, but they don't like to admit it. I have... There's so many of my friends who just get into streaming, and no one's watching them, clearly. And then people just give up. Because there's no point. You're, you'd have to be insane to do what I'm doing. You'd have to be literally insane. Almost. To basically be a nobody and try to get somewhere without being someone in the first place. Right? You'd have to be insane. But, you know, I'm gonna be insane about it, you know? I'm gonna be... Wacky. I've been going for like almost two hours now without a drink. Because I've just been talking. For so long. I should probably go get a drink. So, I'm gonna go use the restroom real quick, and I'm also gonna um, go get a drink because I am fucking thirsty. <laughs> I'll be right back. Love you.
All right, I am back. Okay. I feel like I should, sh I should uh, segue. Although I, I have a lot of fun talking about the struggles of being a content creator on the internet in 2021. Um, you know, it's still a lot of fun. You know, every single time I have like two or three people talking to me in the chat, it just fucking reminds me how much fun this can be if you have people watching you, right? I just wanted to get that out there. I love entertaining you guys. In the end, anybody who's watching me, thank you. It means so much to me, anybody who supports me in any sort of way possible. Whether it's from YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Even though I say weird shit on Twitter or Instagram on purpose because it gets likes. I've already, I tweeted this out because it was, a cons it was just something I felt like I needed to get out there. I say weird shit because it's very clear that if I don't say weird stuff, it's not gonna... It's not gonna get any clicks. No one's gonna fucking care. No one's gonna fucking respond. It happens all the time. You want me to give you an example? I'll give you an example. And I do this on purpose. Every Everybody just says weird stuff on purpose sometimes. Um, I said, let's see here. Uh, God, I love Amelia Watson. She's so fucking hot. God, help me. Give me strength. Two likes. That's good. But I made like a different tweet. I said, McDonald's, bring back the signature pa uh, sauce packets, you fucking dolts. No one. Uh, let me look at the analytics. 32 impressions. Meanwhile, the Amelia Watson one. 116 impressions. That's just people scrolling past it, by the way. But 116 impressions and 11 total engagements. Though That's the difference between posting weird things, like saying weird shit, and not saying weird shit. I'm playing the game in a very specific way. Like, I have to- I have to do that, right? And then I- of course, I tweeted out, the reason why I post weird tweets is because normal tweets don't get likes or comments. I try to be funny and, like, that's, like, 60% true. Sure. I try to be funny. That had, like, 81 impressions and 18 total engagements. But you think those four likes of those of those people who bothered to give it any kind of attention for once because it's out it serious for once went on to go and see my next tweet which was made this morning where only 58 people and eight total engagements with one like. The Virgin, you know, me doing a joke where I said there's the anime co figurine collector versus the Hot Toys figurine collector. It was like a whole joke. No one, like, cared. Uh, and then I, I said snipper clips real 34, which I thought was kind of funny, but yeah, it's just the only time I ever get anything, any kind of attention is if I'm weird. And that's always been the case for my entire life <laughs> since middle school, uh, because I actually started trying to be funny, which meant I had to be, I was like weird, right? I was always weird, but I wasn't like the weird kind of funny for a while. So, that's what it's kind of been, and that's the only time I ever get any kind of something, is if I'm weird, or just obscure, or just out there about stuff. Because if, if I'm not, then I don't have anything. I'm not important in any kind of aspect. I'm not interesting to people, and unless I'm weird. That's why I get so much on the Discord server I'm in, I was in, or am in now, but I was weird. I would post cursed images on purpose. To get a reaction out of people. And you know what that ended up doing? <laughs> that ended up getting people to know who I am and like me. And also kind of had some people dislike me. You know, there's people who hated me. But those people literally didn't even know who I was. And they took everything I said to heart and literally. So those people can fuck off. Fuck off or whatever, you know. They're toxic Nazi lovers. Um, but I ended up getting a bunch of people who just like me because I'm weird or I do weird things or anything of that aspect and that's the only kind of attention time I ever get attention is that I have to be weird <laughs> I can't just be outright funny because that's not interesting enough 
Um, and that's how I have to play it. On the internet. It's so depressing. It's really, 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 uh, depressing. And, um... I wouldn't recommend anyone else doing it, because people will take what- how you act as to heart. Like, that's who you are. Which is entirely- it's not entirely true. Like, obviously, I'm weird. I say, you know, I'm weird. But I'm doing it for the sake of entertainment. I'm not actually entirely weird, you know? There are some things I'm probably weird about. Naturally, or whatever. But I'm- I'm like, you know- I'm- I'm a shy person, I guess. I've always been a shy person. I won't- say I have anxiety or anything like that because I wasn't diagnosed with it so I'm not even gonna say anything like that maybe I do maybe I don't um that's gonna be a conclusion you're gonna have to come up with but th if there's one thing I wanted to take away from I want someone to take away from my streams is that they're personal and it makes you feel like you're next to me like you, f I feel like I'm talking to you, and you're next to me, and we're just hanging out. That's how I've always wanted my streams to be. Just kind of like, just a nice, comfy, comfy feeling of having having that person, me, be kind of like, just there talking to you, as if as if I'm talking to you. And that's how I've always wanted to do things, very personal, um, because that makes you feel more engaged over time. Like, I'm not, like, obviously, I can't just talk about, so easily talk about things that happen in my life all the time, because I'm not a crazy person. Even though I may seem kind of crazy at times, you know, like, kind of weird at times, I'm not even that crazy. I don't leave the house at all, like, 90% of the time. The only time I've left the house as of late is to just see friends, and that's the only time I really get out of the house now. Um, so I don't have crazy stories to tell all the time that I can remember off the top of my head so easily. Excuse me. I'm drinking a seltzer, so... I don't have that ability to be able to have hundreds of stories like Game Grumps or um, Oni Plays or uh, Super Mega or anybody else that's like a duo or some shit, right? I'm not, I don't have that ability to do that all the time like they can. Because, well, one, I'm I'm by myself most of the time on my streams, which is good. Fuck doing things with viewers all the time. Unless they're, like, you know, super gamers. <laughs> no. But, like, long-time people are kind of, like, a little bit of a... It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but... <sighs> yeah, it's just, like... Where was I? Yeah, it's just... Like... I feel like I need... I'm slowly becoming, like, having this realization. I feel like I need to outright mention whenever I... Like, because I'm diagnosed with ADHD. I feel like I have to mention that outright now. Or else people will just take me as a weird person. Even though I'm just... I, I'm just built different. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm I have ADHD. I feel like I have to I have to mention that like I'm like someone who has STDs or AIDS. They have to tell that before they have sex with their partner, right? Or whenever you're a sex offender, you have to tell everybody in your neighborhood that you're a sex offender, right? I feel like I have to do that now, uh, because if I don't, then people are just gonna take me outright as just a weird person and think that I'm just normal by default. Like I'm just a normal human being. I'm just weird, like or like I'm insane. Which, I guess I kind of am, but not like insane insane, you know? But you get what I'm saying. Uh, so like... Again, I don't really have much to talk about, so whenever I'm doing streams, I'm focusing on the game and just commentating on the game and just... I, I'm get, actually getting better, actually, with um, coming up with jokes or anything like that. Because I can so like effortlessly do it when I'm with friends because I know how to make them laugh. Because you, you hang out with people after a while, you know how to make them laugh, right? I guess that's the same with comedians. Once you have an audience, once you know how to make them laugh, you can pretty much just go go ham. I think that's similar with um, co making content here. I'm slowly getting better at kind of coming up with jokes and talking about the game. I'm actually getting better as a commentator. Uh doing this two years now almost two years now but yeah so much better than when i started 
hands down. But yeah, I, I'm good with I'm good with commentary now. Before when I did um when I played Alien Isolation Isolation on YouTube. Um, sorry if I have like a little thing. My throat's starting to fucking kill me. Like it's actually starting to, like hurt from how much I'm talking. <sighs> so I'm like drinking a bunch here is because I'm trying to like soothe my throat. Ugh. I'm getting pretty good at commentating on things, you know? Getting better. So, I can say that I'm improving. But yeah, I just, uh, I just, I, I don't know. Even when I have, like, a bunch of stories to tell, they almost never pop into my head when I'm talking. And when they do, I always stutter. I'm always bad at just re- just mentioning stuff because, like, my brain ju just goes blank because I always have that th thought in the back of my head, like, oh, this better be funny. I hope this is funny. I need this to be funny. I always have that in the back of my head, so, like, I'm always just, like, stuttering over my words because I'm thinking too much about how if it's gonna be funny or not while I'm trying to say it, so then I just forget. And then I just lose my train of thought on what I'm trying to say. And then I, f you know... I'm just repeating myself, so I'm just cutting it off now. But yeah. Uh, another thing is that I'm sorry if, like, the thing kind of looks fuzzy sometimes. I have, like, no control over it. If it looks a little odd, I did up my... I upped my, um, quality to 1080p so it looks better. So if you look if you look at the fuzziness, I'm sorry, it's because I have to share internet with my parents and they're always streaming stuff. So they're using up a lot of the bandwidth. Uh, so until I can get my own, like I, I can afford my own ISP, I'm going to be stuck with fuzzy stream. So it's not going to look nearly as good as it would like I would like it to be, but hopefully the audio looks a lot better with um with this. And, you know, I am I miss doing podcasts. Uh, the, one of the reasons why I stopped doing the Cretan cast was because the other co-hosts of the things, one of them wasn't even showing up anymore. He was getting into a relationship and he was doing less of actually doing the pod, getting on the podcast with us when we were supposed to do it. And they weren't really, they're not really talkers, you know? Uh, I was the one always leading the conversation all the time, every time. So I guess in a way, this has kind of become my podcast, which is kind of weird. <laughs> and like, that's why I kind of designed it to be kind of like a just chatting thing. But if no one's going to show up, this is more like a podcast, right? With no one to listen to? I don't know. Either way, uh, it sucks. I checked my SoundCloud. I don't know why I still have that here. But I checked the SoundCloud, and literally, uh, it deleted, or at least hidden, the other episodes from the SoundCloud thing, because they don't have premium anymore. So they just removed those entirely from there, and it probably archived them until I pay for the $20 subscription, or however much it was that I was paying for, with no... By the way, like I said, I was... I'm do things for the stream and for the channel with no payback. I'm sp literally burning money. I, I might as well just be burning money because that's what I'm doing. Um, I do all these ambitious things and because I'm a nobody, it doesn't pay off. And also I'm not fortunate and no one's like, it'll work for like, before they did their, before Twitch did their update, where they show how many view total viewers you got throughout the entire stream, and then they add on viewers as people watch the VOD. Uh, and in between, I think as well. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, in between as well, while I'm streaming, and then someone's watching the VOD through while I'm streaming, so then they can catch up, and then whenever the stream ends, they can finish watching it that way. I know there's some people do that, I do that sometimes. Um... Yeah, I, uh, 
There is okay. Um, th th before they updated it, the first episode of the Cretan cast, I was constantly advertising on everything I possibly could. Um, I think that only got that got about like a hundred, hundred viewers, total. Prior, I think that was prior to the update. So about a hundred viewers watched the podcast afterwards. I think. Or this was after. I think this was after. So about 100 people popped in. Really good, right? That's a really good number. And then it just declined. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way. Again. I kind of don't like the update where it shows the total amount of views per stream. It looks nicer though. It does make the channel look nicer. The issue is that it doesn't show the actual amount of people watching the VOD. Which is the was the point to begin with. I get it though. But it was just kind of a dumb update. Also made the about me section kind of a little obsolete. Tiny bit. Well, you can see it now, but... If you... Yeah. You guys can see it, but, like... It was a little weird because you have to go out of your way in the about me part just to get to the other parts, like those panels that I made, if, if I'm not live streaming. Which is a little annoying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it great? It's just... <sighs> oh yeah, I wanted to be a tiny bit of a hypocrite again about viewing, being a viewer as a, uh, to a streamer. So I watched this one viewer, or Twitch streamer, and um, I'm more of a lurker and a VOD watcher kind of, but because of them, I like, I'm not even joking. They get me more into more games than I realize. And that's the thing with reoccurring viewers, is that you end up getting into games that you may or may not have wanted to get into because you're actually watching the person play games that you may or may not like, but you're willing to give it a try because you like the streamer enough to watch them play a different game that may may be different. Like, um, they played through Battle Brothers. I'm probably going to watch the stream at some point probably not now i didn't feel like it right now but i'll probably watch it but that's a game that i've never played before and i'm interested in it because it has a permadeath feature and things like that where the viewers come in and they're like little characters and things where they go out into battle and then die <laughs> but it's a really interesting game that i didn't even know existed up until he mentioned it and was talking about it in past streams he was like oh yeah i'm gonna be playing this he also was talking about playing vintage story and whatever i got into Vint i think vintage story is a really cool game i didn't even know it existed because of them but because of that and because they're playing different games i'm actually getting into newer games because i'm actually willing to watch those videos because he i i like him as a person so you know if I if there's a streamer I like, I'm willing to watch almost everything they make. Like, they're gonna play eight hours of Thief Two. Fuck yeah, I'll watch it. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to watch the VOD of it though. Like, I would love to. I'm not really that much into because I don't really have time to watch the whole thing live. Sometimes I might miss a part, so I like to reverse the stream backwards, which I wish Twitch had. And um. I really wish they had that feature like YouTube has. YouTube has that feature where you, oh, you missed something um, that just happened. Okay, just go back real quick. Just hit back on your keyboard. There you go. And you can watch that part that you just missed. And you can just do that. That would be very nice. But they don't have that feature on Twitch. You have to like go off of the stream, go into the VOD that's currently being recorded and posted as it's streaming. And then you have to go up to the part that you wanted to go to just to see the part that you wanted to see it's a pain in the ass they really need to fix that and i agree with um i agreed with what he said about it i'm not gonna say who it is because i don't want i want you guys knowing but i watch them all the time they're a little they're only they have about like a hundred thousand followers and i didn't even know i was gonna end up liking their content <laughs> to begin with because it was a it was from it was a friend of another of a youtuber who does twitch streams and their videos got popular because they were they were just edited versions of streams like of the vods of the stream so someone they had like an editor edit the videos post it to there or 
they posted it on there and then they just started gaining views because they just ended up playing specific games that got popular or something like that. Um, and they were part of those videos. They didn't do streaming for a while. And then they suddenly started streaming and I was just like, oh, hey, they were playing Stalker. Oh, this is really fucking funny. They, were mo they modded it. And they were playing random Xbox games and it was really funny. <laughs> and so I got into them because of another person. Um, almost kind of like sharing their content, but being a part of it. Now, I will say this, in a way, he got popular because of someone else being popular. So, that's kind of how you have to play it sometimes, you know? You have to leech off of people sometimes to get somewhere. It kind of happens, um, with me. I just wish that it wasn't a... <laughs> I'm so sorry, uh, dear queen, but I <laughs> I feel kind of like a leech sometimes what, uh, with you, um, whenever you, but it, it's not like it matters because I wish it, like, if it was a guy or something, it would probably be different, but since she's a girl, most of the people don't give a shit about me, because <laughs> I'm not a girl, um, but if I was, uh, you know, if it was like a guy, you know, sitting around with a guy or whatever, then it would be different, but all those people who... Not simps, obviously. <clears throat> they don't actually stick around. They don't follow me. They don't say anything in the chat. They just go. They Even though she requests them whenever she does. This is why I don't do raids. Because none of my followers are actually going to stick around and do the raid. Like, no one wants to do that. They're there for the person. They're not, they don't want to have to go to a different person they don't know. Because people like to be... They like to be comfortable. They don't like having to go harass another person. That's why I don't do raids. Because it's not going to work out. Like, she sends me, like, 7, 10 people. It doesn't even matter. However many people they'll send over. They're not even going to follow me. They don't care about me. They're going to leave. They'll stay, like, maybe for 15 seconds. And then they'll leave. <laughs> it's true. But then again, hey. If I have to be a k kind of a little leech... For the sake of my own channel, I might be a, a, a tiny little leech, you know, a little, little tiny little little baby leech. Just, you know, it's good to make friends, right? <laughs> I sound like such an asshole, but it's true. I have to, I have to play this like a business, you know. Whenever people do collaborations with other people, it's usually for the sake of their own benefit, right? Both benefit, whatever. And she doesn't even put me, even though she raids me all the time, she doesn't even put me in her channel. Like, on her channel thing in the bottom. I put her in mine. <laughs> Look at me complaining about a friend of mine who I don't really even talk to that much. You don't even, you know what's the saddest part? Is that they don't even fucking stream. Like, at all. Like, nearly as much as I do. They streamed four days ago. And they're probably gonna get just as much, if not more, viewers than me. <laughs> because they're a VTuber. And I'm not so depressing i mean like again they put their own effort into their other into other things other ta their own talents that they can do which is something that i clearly can't do i don't have the equipment or anything like that that i can do something like that and i wouldn't even want to do that i don't want to be a vtuber right i don't want to do any of that shit but some people can and some people will and it can pay off it's just gonna she she's at like 258 now actually she hasn't streamed for four fucking days She's only been doing this, I think, for eight months. <laughs> like, way less than me. It's so fucked. <laughs> but, hey. I'm a dude, whatever. Maybe if I was, like... I don't know. I don't like... Another thing that I see people do all the time, and I don't like to do... Like, I'm already making an exception with having chat box while I'm playing a game. Like, in the game itself. Um, the only reason I have that is because of the Frank's TV and the, um, the Better TV, TTV thing. Because if you do, like, any of those emotes that I have set, I forgot which ones I have. That's why I put the exclamation point emotes command in there. Um, those are the ones you can do because they don't pop up. Well, actually, they do pop up now. But at, for a while, they didn't pop up. And I want people who are doing those for others to see it in the chat so then people can kind of get a reference of what why people are saying that and what it looks like so they have a visual understanding so whenever someone do, does like hyperclap or peepo happy they'll know what the fuck they're talking about because it'll pop up in the chat box and it'll actually show what it looks like um 
unlike if you were doing it in the Twitch chat, you wouldn't even be able to see it. Unless there's probably like an add-on that I don't know exists that people probably use. Um, I don't know. But on normal, general, the regular Twitch chat, none of those like better TTV emotes and things like that don't pop up normally. It's just text that says the command name for the extra emote thing. That's the only reason why I have chat box, but webcam. <laughs> The only reason I use webcam is out of just the fact that people have asked me to turn on webcam. I don't like to use webcam. I'm very self-conscious uh, about myself, and I don't want it to take away from the, the stream, the game itself. Uh, I want to try to, you know, immerse people in the game and less on me, the face. I don't want that to happen. So that's why I don't do it. Even if it's more beneficial and it happens to be more beneficial for the channel, I don't like it. I, I just want more of my voice, the game, and the visual that, you know, just whatever they're looking at. That's it. I just, I want the focus on that and then what I have to say rather than what I look like. Because it shouldn't matter what I look like, but it does a lot of times and it just depress, depresses me. So I don't want that. <laughs> There's some people who are very judgmental too. Very, very judgmental. But even my voice. You know how self-conscious I am of my voice? I do get comments. I do get, like, you know, positive comments about my voice. But it is a very, um, it is a very uh, bad, like, insecurity I have. All of my insecurities are because of past, like, just issues of just um, being bullied about certain things multiple times all the time. So it just kind of... It's just like a natural thing of mine where I'm just insecure about myself, about those things. Uh, like, uh, because I, I have like, I don't, I have a lighter pitch voice. So people may think that I'm a child if I do have, I kind of have like a childish voice still. I, I'm, I wouldn't, I don't know. I, I do, I would say I do. I have a pr very childish kind of voice. I don't think I have like an adult voice. <laughs> I would assume. Um... So a lot of people who are probably popping in probably think that I'm a kid, right? They'll probably think I'm a child. Uh, that's why I put my age in the about me part where I mentioned, hey, I'm 20 years old. Here's this and everything. So then people who are slightly interested in that, maybe they're kind of curious. I used to be called, like for a very long time, I was just always called a squeaker or like I had an annoying voice or I was, I was always taught talk at a raged voice because I, I didn't know volume levels properly because ADHD um, and constantly being in childish environments because um, that's just how schools treated people with ADHD they treated them as like disabled people or well sorry I didn't mean I don't mean that you get what I mean just people who are not able properly or they have actual disabilities like people who may have like a built they don't they have they ha don't have the ability to talk properly or listen properly or anything like that you get what i'm saying or um you know mentally i guess you could say so they they treat treated adhd people not really that good for a while so i was always in very childish like classes that are not really like good and i wasn't really i wasn't really prepared properly for school life so i always got in trouble all the time because i was always doing bad things that you're not supposed to do in schools so you had this whole thing where i was constantly going to the principals all the time and all that stuff because i wasn't used to school life properly i wasn't raised properly um so i had to constantly deal with that and then again throughout middle school and high school i had to go through special ed classes all the time so i was even i was in like easier kind of classes kind of because i was so far behind probably on stuff and just education wise but the last school i went before that they just put me in like the short bus all the time so i got to leave class early and you know as a kid that i was like oh cool i get to go home early for no reason i didn't know why But yeah, I was, um, because I was such an outsider, I would always, like, uh, just be by myself all the time. During recess, I'd just not, I mean, I, I guess some people, like, 
agree with this. They've also done this too. But like, I was always just by myself. Just expecting that. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe someone to just come up to me and be my friend. Um, I think there's like, rarely, I would rarely interact with students in my old school. And when I did, it was always like such a weird conversation, I guess. Like, um, I think there's this one person who talked to me. I think someone broke into the school. So for some reason, I awkwardly said, I for some reason thought to bring up as someone talked to me. I think it was like the first time someone talked to me <laughs> in a while. Uh, I just said, I still wet the bed or something like that. <laughs> Completely broke the, um, the, they were like scared because someone broke into the school. So they thought that I guess they would get killed even though there was police officers right there. Um, but you know, they're kids, I guess. So we didn't understand. So I guess it was a good thing to bring up the fact that I did that. So she went from being scared to being weirded out. Um, and walked into the classroom. I remember that so specific. I was such a, like, an asshole, too. Such an outcast. I would sit by myself eating those really shitty Crustables, um, PB&Js that I didn't like. Um, the only reason I liked them was for the jello, for the grape jelly, that's it. I didn't really like the, uh, my neck's killing me. I didn't really like the peanut butter. I don't like peanut butter. Peanut butter is gross. It's so, it's such a, not that good flavor at all. And in fact, it makes my mouth feel dry. Drier than before. Oh yeah. Da, da, da. Mm. 940. This stream's actually doing just as good as it did as the last stream I did earlier today. Um, no one. So yeah, that's pretty cool, right? But yeah, uh, let's see. How many people watched that? I was like four something. It was like six people, I think, this stream I did earlier today, which wasn't even like a full stream. Let me see for this one. This one, the last one I did, part two i guess episode two that almost had like 30 views that's pretty good pretty good pretty good and that was only for how many how long did i do it for three hours and 34 minutes that's pretty good i was playing a game though at, at the end though i did play a game well afterwards but yeah um let me see here what were we talking about uh, oh yeah school so yeah i was definitely um kind of a little insecure about that and then I think it got worse over whenever I moved to the other school I went to, the other school district. I don't know, what, I forgot what you call it. Just the, that school, other than that, those schools. Because my, mo my mom wanted me to go to better schools. Um, better school. Fuck it, whatever. I'm having a stroke. Uh, I was uh, constantly bullied for because I was like, I was like, by the time I was in high school, I was like still as short as like a like a middle schooler. <laughs> I was still I was still really really short, and even by the end of middle school, um, even during middle school, uh, I was bullied for being short, like really really short. I was probably like the second shortest kid in the school, uh, which is also by the way really dumb fuck the kids there uh fuck all the kids there they're complete assholes to me uh i was constantly bullied because um my adhd was at my worst during this time as well uh, it was it was so bad i was constantly fidgeting i was constantly interrupting the teacher i was um constantly being annoying which is I, it's something i can really control properly because i'm still a kid growing up and I was taking medication, which I guess wasn't helping. Um, and there was just all this, you know. So everybody just didn't really like me or was annoyed by me. So I was constantly bullied in any way they possibly could. And there was be people who would try to corrupt me by talking about like sexual stuff because it was like middle school and people were learning how to be sexual. So like there's like people moaning in class. And it was just it was just such a um, middle school is probably my least favorite year. I hated middle school. Uh, I, and it was also mixed between, I didn't even know, like, to me, 
All I thought was everyone didn't like me. Maybe there was people who did like me, but it didn't- that- if that was the case, that was like by the end of middle school, before we moved on to high school. Because what I did differently is I just went ahead and I said, you know what, if I'm gonna be interrupting the class, I- I was inspired by- I was inspired by Jeff Dunham for some reason. It was so odd. He was my first comedian, um, that was- my dad introduced me to. I loved him, and I instantly liked him, so... And also Family Guy was also something, but that doesn't count. It was a comedian. Um, so I thought, you know what, if I'm gonna be kind of disruptive or something, which I didn't think at the time, I was just thinking, you know, maybe I should just try being funny. So I went ahead and I started doing that instead. And that completely helped, you know? I was basically just making an ass of myself for the sake of comedy, which also ended up affecting my grades and affecting my ability to learn stuff in class, which I was not really doing a good job to begin with in the first place. But, you know, I went ahead and I did it for the sake of something. I, did, I just wanted to be liked. I wanted... Um, to be recognized as someone who wasn't short or annoying anymore. I wanted to be someone that people could like for once, and uh, I think it definitely didn't help that so the things leading up to it, like um, my teacher lashing out at me, my science teacher lashing out at me, because I I was like concerned. Why are the why are the kids who are sitting next to me moving? I asked her, and she lashed out at me saying that because. Nobody, I constantly, she like, it did it in front of the class too, and made me cry <laughs> in front of the class. There was this, she was just like, yeah, no, everybody, I literally have everybody come up to me at the end of class and say, hey, he's being, I don't want to sit next to this person. He's being disruptive. Also, fuck you person who just left. Why don't you just sit around and actually listen to the story instead of just not being interested enough to stay. Uh, anyways. As I was saying, um, because I, I did have like one person watching who just popped in, but they fucked off. They were just like, I guess it wasn't interesting enough, so they fucked off. Exactly my reasoning. I'm just proving my point as I stream. <laughs> um, anyways, so I'm gonna not have it on that one. I like it on stream, uh, Steam Manager. The, um, Oh, so um, yeah, I uh, I was also like when I cried a lot. Like I would always, I was always crying easily. But yeah, I did not have a good time. But yeah, comedy saved me. So I just turned to that, and that helped me. That helped people like me for as a class clown. Um, as I went to high school. I went from being funny and I slowly started developing a different kind of solution because everybody was just seeing me as, oh, I'm a funny guy, I'm gonna be a complete asshat in front of everyone. Yes, I use the British term. I'm gonna be a complete dumbass and just make a fool of myself on purpose, purposely for the sake of people's entertainment in class because I wanted to be liked. But then it changed halfway through and I thought I want to be taken seriously too I don't want people to just see me as a joke and think everything I say is just a joke so I tried that so for the next like good couple for the next couple years after freshman year I was kind of going between being a funny boy and just dicking around with my friends Sometimes in class or whatever, just dicking around. To, um... Just kind of trying to be serious at some point. And, um... So it's, it, it came to my attention that at that point in time, those people that were nice to me and talked to me didn't actually care about me in any way outside of me being funny. That's the only thing that mattered to them. They just wanted me to be entertaining and to dance monkey dance. Right? And I learned that the hard way. It fucking sucks every single time, dude. <laughs> um, 
the uh Well, first of all, I started taking growth hormone shots, so then I was going to be less, so then I would start growing, because my mom, I guess, was concerned about my height, and me not hitting puberty faster than the other kids, so I guess she went ahead and wanted to get me tested for that, and I came up as my brain not working properly, my brain brokey, so I had to start taking growth hormone shots, which means that throughout high school, I was slowly starting to get cut taller and taller. And uh, puberty was taking place. Uh, so I was also very underweight. Uh, because the medicine that I was taking at the time. Was um, making me not have an appetite. So I wouldn't eat as much. So I was I was very very underweight. Uh, and man I got fucked. Like, that was another terrible time too. Dealing with um, constantly being wasteful of food. Because I thought that I could eat it and I couldn't. And people give me, sh like, family members give me shit for it. And me not being able to un comprehend the idea of medication making me um, not as hungry. People would just, fucking family members would be assholes to me. Like, you better finish it. I'm like, hey, fucker. If you understood that my medication was doing this, and if I understood, they'd probably be a little bit more understanding. But no, I, I was a kid who didn't understand what was going on. So they thought I was just being wasteful and getting too much food just to be wasteful, even though it was my medication. So that was also fun too. Um, and then, yeah, also during middle school time was another thing that was going on in my personal life that I don't want to get into today. Maybe in the future when I feel more comfortable about it. Um, which I think I've talked about before, but I don't think... I don't know. Um, I probably have. But... Whatever. Let's see here. Uh... Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Where was he? Oh yeah, so, um... I was hanging out with these kids who kind of just knew me because I was a meme and I had like a video on my channel at the time with 2 million views so everybody was giving me more attention because I guess I was I had a, a popular video on the internet so that was also helping I guess so everybody by the way by senior year knew me they knew exactly who I was because word of mouth um, that kind of similar happened with Discord, uh, Discord server I'm in. It's just kind of become word of mouth on who I, who I am. And so more and more people have known who I am because of just me, my personality. But it's really hard to get that kind out, like that out, when you're on the internet, when no one knows you. Unless you're in like a small community already, it's really difficult, right? So, I don't know. So, yeah. What else? I guess, uh... Oh, yeah, so I, I started... I hung out with a couple of them. I guess they expected me to be all wacky and just off the walls. And when they met me personally and hung out with me... I guess it wasn't good enough, so they decided they didn't want to see me anymore. And they never wanted- they were like, they gave me the promise that we would hang out again, and we never did. And I, that's- at that point I knew, oh, it's because the only thing I, I remember hearing from them was that, Man, Dalton, you're really nice. That was the thing that they were surprised about. They were like, surprised that I was nice. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck were they thinking I was? And I was thinking to myself, I mean, it makes sense. They don't know who I am outside of school they never really really actually n did anything uh, like knew anything about me they just thought i was just who i was on like make who i was acting like like at school was who i was which isn't always the case maybe if i knew you but if like i don't know you i'm gonna be a little bit more actually a normal person um because i don't know your limits on what to joke about so 
you know, the fact that they promised to hang out with me and they never ended up fulfilling that promise uh, ever again. Uh, fuck those people. Thanks for being fake and actually making me think that you're my friend. And then not only that, I even invited these people to my graduation party. And every single, every single person I invited to, other than my actual friends, uh, didn't show up. My actual friends, well, they always had, they had like some kind of excuse on not coming. Some of them did have an excuse, like an actual one that I could understand. S most of them did not. They just said, hey, sorry. Okay, bye. <laughs> it's like, some of them didn't even message, like text me to say, hey, sorry, I'm not coming. But some of them did, and it was just kind of disheartening that you waited till the day of the graduation like it wasn't it was so not important to you that you decided eh I'm not gonna show I don't feel like showing well if you actually cared about me then you would have showed up and that's what I thought I thought these people cared about me and at that point in time as of right now <laughs> I mean <laughs> that's what again Asmund Gold parasocial relationships I get it. <laughs> I completely get it. In a more, it's a more compact and more enclosed than a community kind of popularity. But I get exactly what he means. That these people who liked me, or at least made me think that they, they like, I, they liked me, didn't actually care about who I was. They just cared about what I did. And they didn't want anything above that. They didn't want anything to do with me because they just think that I'm just this crazy fucking person, apparently. Even though all I did was just do f silly jokes for the sake of entertaining them and ruining my grades in the process for the sake of entertainment. And also trying to have fun in school because school school's boring. But, you know, it's fun, right? You have all these people... And it just, it just, it hurt. Sadly, I knew the teachers, I, I did invite teachers. I knew they couldn't come. They said they, they probably couldn't come um, because uh, there might have been a meeting for all those teachers. Sadly, yeah, all of them, there was like a meeting they had to go to. So I completely understand the teachers. They're really nice. Every teacher that I gave the invitation to, they were really nice teachers and I really liked it. And they really appreciated that I would invite them to um, a graduation party. And it would have been nice. Actually, that is a lie. I think there was a couple of my teachers. I think we're gonna. No wait. No, 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 man. But shout out to those teachers. They were the ones that were nice to me, and you know, in high school and everything. I love them, and I'm happy they helped me. <laughs> you know, and deal dealt with me, obviously. But whatever. And yeah. And as life goes on and uh, that's the reason those kind of things I didn't even really go into detail about what made me insecure definitely middle school with them bullying about my height and maybe even looks as well there's some people who would bully me about my looks as well um, and uh, weight because I was like underweight or something they'd like bully me for it and shit like that and same with the voice, um, online, playing Call of Duty, people call me a squeaker all the time. It was really disheartening, it was really annoying, because it was like, I couldn't make friends and it made me insecure. And similar now, I feel like my voice is still kind of, I guess it's fine, I like it, but I feel like it's, it turns people off. Um, not, because it, it makes me feel like people think that I'm like a kid, still. Which is fine, I guess. And, like, I'm not a kid. I just wish people didn't think that. That's it. That's all I wish. I don't wish for my voice to be deeper. I don't wish my voice to be changed. I just wish that people didn't think that. That's it. <laughs> people didn't care. I, I wish. And I, I don't know. Maybe people don't care. Some people like my voice. Some people don't. I don't know if... I have yet to... I, it's weird because I have yet people to hear people say like oh actually no that's wrong people bully they're like i i'm 13 and i sound deeper than you my voice is deeper than yours 
Well, okay, fuck you then. I'm sorry that I don't have the same genes as you, and I didn't know that having a deep voice mattered. Same with, like, anything else. I didn't think any of that mattered, but apparently it does. And it really is. If you get down to things... If I don't have a webcam, it's all about the voice. And sometimes my voice isn't good enough. And some people don't like it. That's probably why 90% of the people here have popped in, thought, Eh. I don't like his voice, probably deep down and then they left i think the max amount of viewers i had today on stream was three people and that was probably just a couple people who were from something of mine on discord and they just didn't want to actually stay also i'm also streaming on a category that like has like millions of people on there you know what's also weird? Is that I there's a Discord server that someone made called the Dalton Obsessive Fan Club, which is dedicated to me. And there's about Let me see here. There's 24 7 Um there's about like 37 people right 37 let me see 37 come out 37 people 36 if you don't count the music bot uh in this server and you don't see those 36 people watching me right now you, you probably can't even see it if you're listening but there's no one it's, there's no one here it's just me talking to a, a a screen of stream lamps. This is this is this is what you're actually seeing. You wanna see? This is what you're actually seeing. This is the reality of what I'm living. Nothing here. Just all this bullshit going on here. <coughs> all of these that I've put in done a lot of stuff, put a lot of stuff into these. And what do I have to show for it? Nothing. None of this matters. Not even this. I don't even know why this is here. Why do I have this? <laughs> but. That's just how it is, right? Three days ago was my last follower. They haven't even popped on for another stream. And this is... I keep going back to it, but... It's just something that I can't ignore. This is just... The reality. You know? Also, I'm in the wrong thing. <laughs> Here we go. It's just... It's just so, like... Imagine as a viewer who's just stumbled upon this, right? And this is what you see. Just no one here and me talking to no one. Talking about my personal life to no one except for that one person. And then they feel like, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't be here. And then they leave. Or something like that happens. You gotta, like, imagine how weird that is, right? Imagine how weird. This feels like, this whole, what you're seeing, feels like it should have a bunch of people on it. You should see, like, a bunch of text just flying up, right? Just like this, watch. You should just be seeing this, right? But you don't. You see nothing. It's just dead. It's like a ghost town. It's like you've discovered something you haven't seen. And it's just such a weird feeling. Like, I can imagine it as you're just... You've never met me before. And you go up, and you're just like, Oh, what's this? You know what? I'll check, I'll check that out. You click it. And then you just, you're just here, and you're like, He has a chat. No one's watching. 
And he just has that chat there. It just says chat. But there is no chat. Because no one's here. No one's here to say anything. Right? And then... You're like, should I do something? Should I stay? And then he starts talking about... He starts talking about his issues and how he's a small streamer. He's just like... Uh-oh. Maybe I should leave. And then... It keep, he keeps going and going and going. And it just feels so weird and it just feels like I shouldn't be here. It feels like I'm... I, I, it feels dirty. So you leave. Because you don't feel like you... You don't know this person, and they're just talking about something that doesn't sound interesting whatsoever to me, right? There's a small percentage of people who um, even bother with this, right? They're just like, Ugh, I don't like, I don't like that he's talking about his his profession, even though ninety percent of the time he doesn't talk about this. He, and it's just, I feel like I wanted to, I wanted to build a connection to my audience by talking about something so personal and so dear to me. Talk about what you guys are missing out and what I have to go through every single day when I stream. It's just like... But no one cares. And it's weird. To me. But to the audience, it's weird to watch nobody. There's no one here. And some people have this fascination to find people who are small streamers just to watch them right they like to watch like the small people and to see if they can if they do anything weird because it's funny to watch people like small people do weird things like small smaller channels do weird things because then it's just like it's like people are making fun of that person they don't actually get the struggle and then those videos get like millions of views. And do you think any of those one people, one of those people, at least 1% of those people actually went to those ch channels and watched them afterwards? Because I didn't. And I didn't even watch the video. Uh, let me see here. There is a... So there's a channel. There is a channel called the report of the week and he does a video he does a um a podcast and he also does a another thing that he has a huge passion for um he he's also had this dilemma as well and it's just it's like uh It's something that I felt so deeply connected with. Like I, I never resonated with a person more as a as a content creator who's done this, but is has been less fortunate than he has. Um, he does a podcast called The Voice of the Report of the Week. He also does uh, Radio Wave. He does a wave radio stuff where he a broadcast where he talks a short wave radio broadcast where he he talks a little bit, talks about a couple little things. And he just plays music, and usually the music he plays um, is really good, by the way. If you want to listen to any of those shortwave radio recordings, you can follow his uh, Patreon. You can subscribe to his Patreon. And I did that for a bit before COVID, and then COVID happened, and then I didn't have a job, obviously. And so I couldn't afford to, play, uh, to pay for it anymore, so I stopped doing that. But for a while, I was listening to his stuff. And he talked on his VORW podcast. He does these um, podcasts. And he was talking about, for a couple of them, I think it was just one or two, where he was just talking about how he has this passion to do podcasts, to do talk stuff, to do the shortwave radio, but none of that gives him any kind of monetary value. It doesn't actually, it's not a passion that he, it's a passion that he has, but it doesn't pay off. Yet, when he started doing the food review stuff, it started blowing up. It blew up. It makes more money than his what his passion is, and he, even though he kind of likes doing it, he's like it's not what he likes to do. He doesn't entirely like to review food, but it's because it put it it pays the bills, you know. So he's gonna keep doing it. His ideally, he wish he could just do other things because he's more of just a way more down to earth person. He's just he's the most boring person you can possibly probably meet 
but he's it's a, what makes him interesting probably to me like he is so old school even though he's not he wasn't even born in that generation he is so old school that it's just very interesting and um it just it's just i never resonated with someone who's just like he has this passion for something and he does his passion but it doesn't do anything for him and then when he does something that isn't entirely a, a passion maybe it was at first but now it's not entirely a passion it's get it gets more views and more attention than what his passion is which is doing podcasts talk shows or just a radio show that's what he likes to do he likes to listen to shortwave radio he likes to read newspapers he likes to go on walks and wear tuxedos and, or suits in general so it's just something that he likes but it's a shame that it's only it never gets any views and he wishes it did because yeah he i think I, I forget what else the issue was but that was one of the big things and i was just like you know i agree it just sucks that all those people who watch his food reviews aren't even interested or don't even give his podcast or his talk show a chance i don't have a shortwave radio and i don't have the money to do anything like that i'm sure if i had the time i would be able, i would definitely listen to a shortwave radio podcast or shortwave radio show thing where he just plays 80s music and stuff like that <laughs> he also he reads emails all the time he he loves that's another pastime he has he's such an old guy at like such a, a young age that it's just really funny Boo -doo 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 -doo. But yeah i've always loved making videos i just um i just wish it did something you know i wish because i don't i don't get feedback ever Whenever I make anything on Twitch or anything like that. I almost never get feedback. So, I don't even know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, like, I don't even know if I'm being funny. Like, I don't even know if this is entertaining. I don't think anybody gives a shit about me enough to want to listen to me, right? Like, that's the weird thing. And again, it's weird because I've had podcasts, or well, podcasts, I've had the other Harbor episodes that have had people pop in, but this one is different. Today is just such a an odd day with streaming for me because I've been doing streaming all day, basically, because I've just been bored. I have not had anything to do. I start school tomorrow back up tomorrow i'm in college by the way and i've just been i've just gotten no one to watch today it's just been so weird i've maybe i think i've like maybe had like a max of like two people in the past like hour or two and not even that and it's like probably for like a minute or two like maybe one or two minutes it's such a weird thing it's so weird right isn't it weird whenever things just like go that way if that makes sense i don't want to sound selfish or so self-centered because i am i do probably come off self-centered throughout this entire thing like, I feel like, I, because it's weird, because I feel like I deserve something I'm not getting. And I'm putting so much into it. So much into it. And the fact that fucking someone who's done this shit for half, less than half than how long I've been doing it, is getting more views, more people watching, more followers than I am, more subs than I am. And they've been doing it less than me because they're a VTuber slash female. It's like, fuck, dude. 
Like, you, there's a reason why women fucking sexualize themselves. It's because fucking assholes are like complete dickwads, and they don't. They, they, everything has to be fucking like sexually appealing in some way. And that's why VTubers are blowing up. It's because it's something that's appealing to look at. Instead of focusing on the fucking game. Everybody has to look at a fucking drawing. That, like, it looks nice. <laughs> it, ha it has emo e emotes. And it's like something that's pretending to be something. It's all acting. Essentially. Kind of. Just... Man... Like I tell people, the, the one thing that you, if you want to get into something, if you want to get into streaming, right now is it's a really good time, but you have to be a VTuber. That's the best time, because that's starting to grow. That's just starting to grow within the last year. Um, when quarantine started becoming an issue, more people started doing VTubing stuff, because a lot of people are insecure about themselves, and they it's becoming more of a thing. It's like, oh, if I'm... If something I'm not, and it moves around, it kind of looks like an anime character. You know, and that's gonna get people to pop in and give me money, and I completely understand that. But that's just not how I roll. I'm not gonna fucking put on a fake person slash persona unless I'm gonna get paid for it, right? But no, that's not what this channel was built to be to begin with. I'm not gonna start a new channel just to do that, and I don't even have the talent or money to do something like that. I'm not going to do something like that, but it's just, I know it's an opportunity to have, but even then, I'm a dude. I'm not a, I'm not a girl. Maybe if I could do a female voice and pretend to be a female, but if I'm not a girl, I'm not, it's like I'm not going to get anywhere for a very long time. It's really difficult. Unless I'm a professional gamer too. Like if I'm not good at video games, unless I'm like, funnel like really bad and that it's funny like uh you know some people are just people watch good people play games that's why i don't play competitive games like csgo or overwatch or maybe even team fortress 2 because I, if i'm not good at the game no one's gonna watch it's like i have to be good at games to get anywhere probably or speed run which is something that i don't like to do i don't like speed running It's just not my thing, you know? I don't like it. I don't like it, and it's not fun. But, you know, it just, that's what frustrates me the most. <laughs> it's just, it's just, man, it just sucks that I'm putting so much fucking effort into this. I do this every fucking day. I've been streaming longer than I have prior. I, I've done a 10 hour stream for fuck's sake of me watching the same thing for hours and you know what happened between those hours there was no one I was probably streaming the no one as well for multiple hours it was only until the very end that people decided to show up so none of that mattered in between it was just the beginning and the end that's it or maybe even the middle, but... Anyways, what time is it? It's, um... 10.17. Cool, cool. Three-hour session? Do I have anything else to complain about? Let's see. No, I mean, I could just, you know, whine and complain about not getting what I feel like I deserve. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. And that's another thing. I'm t I take such a huge gamble. I'm going to have to spend money to buy Heavy Rain for the sake of streamers. And I don't even think it's going to get any views. Even when I hit 200 followers. I don't think it's going to get any views. And that's what the gamble I have to take every single time I play something. Every single time I did Trine, got like at the max 8 views, I played for like 4 hours. No one was watching. I, I like switched the game halfway through because I was just like, or like 1, like 3 hours in I think I switched the game. Because 
no one fucking watched. No one was watching, and I thought, is there any way for me to save the stream? But there wasn't. It's, it's just... It's just so fucked, dude. <sighs> but life isn't always easy. And, uh... I don't know. Even if I were to make it, I don't even know how I would how it would be. Would I be overwhelmed? Would I be uh What would I feel? I always think that. I would think like I I like to think that I'd be fine and I'd just be the exact same. But I know for a fact I'd have to change in some aspect. And I already know for a fact that, like, if I were, how many controversies I'd have for just my weird tweets I've made. Even though they're weird treats, tw tweets for the sake of being weird. I'd have to explain every single time. Just. I'd have to deal with that. And that's one of probably the most annoying things. That I think people have to deal with nowadays is that they have to be so clean you can't have any flaws about you or else something's wrong and we have to complain about it and cancel you for it because you're because you're better than us or you have you're more fortunate than than me therefore I need to take you down with me and it's just like why can't you just be happy for that person it's because of people sharing their content it's because there's people who liked what they did the reason why they got any kind of popularity whatsoever on the internet or they were pioneers if they were a pioneer then it's different if they were not a pioneer of something then they are then they just were lucky And this is the issue with making content, is that it's not about making it for fun anymore. It's about making it for the sake of trying to get it somewhere. Because you can't have fun without getting it somewhere. And that can take forever. Or if you're unlucky, it can never happen. I'm really hoping that I'm not on the unlucky side. If I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty fortunate, I feel like, in some aspects, in that I am almost at 200 followers at this point in time, but... I mean, it's because I'm not- I'm not god tier. I'm not- I- I don't know. There's one thing I do wish I could- I had, was that I was actually good at video games entirely. Like, if I was good at, like, competitive games, because if I was- if I was good at competitive games, I'd be playing CSGO and Valorant every single sh every single day on stream. And I'd probably have like some kind of year base going on, but I don't because I'm not good at those games. And they don't interest interest me either because they're too stressful. I don't like stressful games, but the, the sad part is that stressful games are the most popular fucking games that you can play on Twitch. And it just hurts that I can't play those because I'm... I'd be either no one would watch me because I'm not good at them and it would also be too stressful for me it's like the worst of possible possible you can possibly have like I have escape from Tarkov I'm never gonna play that game on stream because I'd be bullied you know how many fucking assholes there are on if you play games like that or same with hearthstone it's like if you're not playing at the highest level of play People are going to backseat you, and they're going to hate when you do something wrong. I, I I tried Hearthstone for like one or two streams, and I had a guy join. That was the only time he ever joined the stream. And he was just sitting there t telling me how much it's frustrating to watch me play. Because I'm not being good at the game. And this is the issue with 
like fucking being a small streamer is that the games that i don't want to play like the games that i have to play to get somewhere on the on twitch are the one are the worst games you can possibly play as a twitch streamer if that makes sense like they're games that people are gonna fucking treat you like dog shit for if you're not good really 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 high level pro player at it The only reason Anomaly has anything going on is because he's good at the game. He has global. He's gotten global twice. On CSGO. And he plays the game all the time. Like, pretty much every day. And also, he did funny, like, loud reactions to getting knives and getting really good knives and really... Just getting really lucky at pulling knives. <laughs> and just rare skins and things like that. He's just really lucky. Hold on, I have to block a, a spam number who just told me about something dumb. But yeah, you just have that shit going on, right? It's just, it's such a fucked system that people just choose to ignore because they're not a part of it. They don't know, right? They don't know how annoying it is. I, I, the only reason I played SCP Containment Breach every single day was because it was actually getting views, like viewers, and then I just played that all the time, because I legitimately just wanted, I wanted to get views, I was desperate to get affiliate, and I did anything I could possibly do. Now, whether that was reacting to videos on just chatting, or... Or just playing SCP Containment Breach, that was it. Or Roblox. Yep, those three things. And that's what I did for about three or four months. And when I first started out, I played uh, Metal Gear Solid. Three. And I got a decent following with that. People were watching. You know what was the sad part? Is I didn't have my computer at yet at the time. So I was streaming my PlayStation 3? I was streaming my PlayStation 3... To my, I have a drawing tablet. It's a Wacom companion. That was my computer for a long time. So I was playing SCP Containment Breach and playing um, Metal Gear Solid 3 on those two things because I didn't have enough money. I was still going through um, having to pay rent to live here because <laughs> I, was, I, I wasn't in school yet and they, for some reason, thought that I wasn't going to go to school. They thought I was going to be a fucking nobody even though... I was gonna go to school. What happened was a huge chain of events. So I was just coming off of about to quit my job and I was saving up a little bit of money left before I started school so, uh, so I could buy my PC that I have currently. So while I was waiting, I was streaming on my gaming tablet, or not gaming tablet, it was just a drawing tablet. And so I was streaming using an Elgato to the TV and PlayStation 3 sucks. And again, this is what I'm saying with I've been I've always worked with what I've had. That's basically how I've had to do stuff is that I've just had to use with what I I've got because I don't have enough money to buy anything, right? Cuz I'm still like fucking young. You know, I don't have like a full-time job or anything like that. So um, PS3 is really weird in how it, it lets you show games, and it wouldn't it wouldn't show audio. So what I had to do was I had to turn the game up on the TV, and that would be the sound for the game. So people would have to hear the game from that to my microphone, and so my microphone would have to pick up the game from the TV, the game audio from the TV, and that's how I had to do my streams. And then, um, and all, uh, if I was playing Metal Gear Solid 3, and then, I forgot what his name was. He's, he's not, he's unfollowed me since, sadly. Or his channel's gotten removed or something. But, they were my first follower, and they would watch me play Metal Gear Solid 3. It was, it was nice. Yeah, all of my old followers that I've had have now since unfollowed me. 
uh, now Ben is my first follower. <laughs> Even though he wasn't originally, uh, as far as I know. Wait, he might have. I think it was either... I think Ben actually was my first follower. I could be wrong. I think he was like my fifth follower. Fifth or tenth follower. But... It was that, and then... I was playing SCP Container Breach on my shitty laptop, or drawing tablet that didn't have enough power to really run Steam Streamlabs and that on top of each other. So, uh, it was really laggy. <laughs> But I was able to stream at 1080p for some reason at the time, which changed when COVID hit. That's when everything changed with how I was able to stream at 1080p because for so all of a sudden the internet doesn't work right anymore. <laughs> and then I couldn't stream properly. It was such a weird thing to be able to go from being able to stream good, not being able to for a very long time, and now it's okay. I'm gonna have to just live with it. <sighs> but... Yeah. <sighs> I have, um... A viewer named Ice God who came in from my Darkwood playthrough, where I actually played the game each stream I played it, I was playing it for like eight hours, eight and a half hours each. I think during those streams, I didn't even get that many viewers to begin with. And I didn't get that many followers either. I think that was like the only, the one time I got maybe like one or two followers. And I was playing that, both of those, those are, those are like eight and a half hour streams I was doing that for. And when I got to the swamp level, I was thinking to myself, fuck this. I basically, I already know the ending. It's not really that good, so I might as well just stop then and there. I did the two sections, I'm done. I'm not touching that game again. Uh, it was a lot of fun. You can, If you want to, you can play the swamp part. I'm not going to do it. I can't put myself through that again. Because uh, it's really difficult. It's a really hard game, but it just kind of dies for me after that second part, which gets really annoying to do. It's a cool game, though. Really cool game. Just, man, oh, man. It was probably pretty funny, too, to watch, too. But... Shinmu 2. Can't wait for that. I might even play Shinmu 3, but who knows. Again, that's like a gamble. Like, I have to- this is like costing me money. Because I'm only buying these games to play them on stream. Man, this combat is not out yet. Uh, Heavy Rain is about $20. Jupiter Hell. Westerado. I do want to play Westerado on a stream, but I don't think that's going to get any views. Because it's a game that no one really remembers. So, I doubt that people would be popping in suddenly one day just wanting to watch someone play, uh, uh, Wistrotto. Hunt Showdown would be interesting, but no. I haven't even really watched gameplay of it. Putt Putt would be interesting. I've wanted to play Putt Putt in terms of the race. Maybe Garfield Kart. There's just a lot of games that, again, I have to think, because I'm thinking completely differently. I'm not thinking, is this game popular? I'm Because I'm thinking, if the game's popular, it's going to not really get views. Maybe S Sea of Thieves. Maybe. But that's only if you're really good at the game. A lot of these games that are popular that people say you should play are fucking dumbasses. Because the statistics, even if the statistics say so, the thing is, is you're not going to get... Unless you are really, really good at the game. You can't just straight up tell people, Hey, don't backseat. Because you're not good at the game. You can't just straight up say that. Um, well, you can. It's just that no one's going to really watch because you're not good at the game. So you have to be god tier at those games that they tell you to. If I were to play Sea of Thieves on stream, I'd first have to buy the game. But second, I'd have to be able to be good at the game. Which I'm not. 
first of all, I've never really played it. I played it a couple times. It's not really that good of a game. The only time it, it's fun is if you play it in a very specific way. If you're doing the grind, it's not really that fun to watch. If you're goofing around with friends, it can be interesting to watch. If you're fucking with people by boarding their ships, sleeping, aka hiding in their on their ship somewhere, then stealing their stuff like you're a fucking Metal Gear Solid, like your Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid, then that's really interesting and fun to watch. But there's so many people who play League because it's like a popular kind of niche-ish game. But you're fucked if you don't know how to play it. The only reason, like if you're new and you want to play League, you're good at the game. Well, you better be good at raging too. Because if you're not raging, it's not going to be that interesting unless you're really, really fucking good at the game. And you're really good at commentating. Uh, on top of playing the game. Because fuck that. <laughs> you're not getting anywhere, buddy. And you also have to play it every single day for the rest of your life until you say, fuck this, I actually want to try something. And in that process, you think to yourself, I'm going to kill half of my viewership if I change the game. Because I'm not playing the same thing over and over again. Because they want to watch you to play the same game. And unless you are willing to do that, you're going to, you know kill half your channel if you want to change it up because wow people are so just they're stuck in what they want to watch they don't want to they don't want to stray from new things they don't want to learn new things they don't want to see new games and that's what i did with my channel my twitch channel when i uh when i decided i didn't want to play roblox SCP Containment Breach and um, and just chatting just I don't know what I did in reacting to videos I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life until I got something going on I didn't want to do that so I stopped and then no one watched me anymore <laughs> those people that would pop in maybe stopped watching me right and you know what's the sad part? Is that they only ever come on if I'm playing SCP Containment Breach for a stream. <laughs> How much I, I could bet you if I were to play SCP Containment Breach I come on, I go on there every once in a while. If I were to play SCP Containment Breach I'd have like nine viewers. Right? That's just how it is. But that's not you know. Sorry, I got lost there. <laughs> I don't even... We were talking about, like... I was just giving you statistics on games, I guess. I, I was thinking of playing at Mother 3, and I thought... If people aren't willing to stay throughout an entire playthrough, 90% of the time, there's no point in playing Mother 3. Because the game... There's parts in the game where you have to grind on, the, on there. It would not... People would probably not stay. For the entire playthrough and it'll probably take forever so i'm thinking i'm not gonna do this so i changed it to heavy rain because i thought that's a game that's interesting enough and popular enough that it's possible that people that at some point throughout the week when i'm playing it if i hit 200 at some point here i don't know when i have to get eight more followers Actually, nine more followers to know, but throughout the week, I'm hoping to God that my $20 will not be in vain because I'm not getting really entirely paid for this. Um, so, who knows? Who fucking knows? I've been waiting to do a meme because I was at one point at... 14 followers or subs subscribers um, I was gonna do a meme where I said 
uh, it was gonna be a but if you close your eyes meme where I go from 15, 14 sub subscribers to zero subscribers and the whole meme was just but if you close your eyes is it nothing it doesn't seem like nothing's changed at all because it really didn't nothing's really changed I'm still not making anything and all those people didn't even like first of all like 10 of those fo uh, subscribers were um subbed like I, I gifted the subs so I could get a emote so I, I gifted like $20 of uh, worth of subs so I could get an emote <clears throat> and uh, sadly none of them almost all of them didn't even resub so that was kind of a waste of money but I guess I got a new emote out of it it just means it's gonna take even longer to get the next uh, emote slot so then more people will be enticed to want to follow but if I can't even get that then I don't think people are really gonna be following me for a long time because I can't even get enough subs to be able to add more slots which would entice people to want to sub because I they have emotes they can use like I have like two emotes you can use in tier one which is my goal I wanted to have tier one emotes I didn't want to have tier two or tier three emotes the only reason I added those was for the sake of just being able to have more than just one emote but uh, you know I had like this whole plan for um, doing like a contest tournament system where everyone could commission their own emotes for the stream for the channel Please don't steal my idea. Fuck you if you do. This is is an original idea I've never seen people do. Um, so if you steal it, I know you will. You better fucking credit me, you fucking cuck leech. Uh, so, basically the idea is, there's probably already like five other people who've had the same idea. <clears throat> where everyone sends a commission. And um, there's like a whole tournament system where people vote on which ones they like. And it all comes down to like a emote, a new emote, and then everyone's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Although there is some issues with that, I'd have to find a way to figure out how to make it so people can't just rig it in some way. Because if it does get rigged, I'd probably know. Uh, which will then get disqualified, probably. So I could probably just do that. If it's like a really inappropriate emote, and then everybody, someone like sends it to 4chan or something, and then 4chan like bombs it, basically making that the most requested one, and it's like really inappropriate. <clears throat> probably not gonna happen because I'd be handpicking, basically, emotes, almost, almost handpicking. You know what I'm saying? But like, if it's anything inappropriate, I'd probably just disqualify it for being spammed which is it's gonna be very obvious because it would have the most votes it would be like a shit ton more votes more than anything else which is very makes it very obvious obviously but yeah you know you know how it is j cole fans be like but yeah i don't know just just doing your own thing you know just gotta <laughs> is there anything else I want to talk about? Probably not. I was hoping that someone would come in and ask a genuine question. But I don't got anyone today. No one's no one no reoccurring viewers, no returning boys popped in today other than maybe one. Uh, I'm not totally sure. That's the only one that said anything, and it was a friend of mine. That's not even like a random person, it was just a friend that I know. So, you got to watch the most depressing, but most personal, um, stream. Harbor stream, I guess. Whatever you call it. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was interesting to listen to. If there's anybody there listening? <laughs> so.
maybe if I upload this onto YouTube, maybe in the future. But if I don't upload this and someone happens to just be scrolling by and actually watching all these, which uh, happen every Sunday, by the way. They do, yeah. Thanks for listening, I guess. I'm sorry. I uh, got a little too depressing or anything like that. I just wish... I just hope this was all for nothing. I always wish that, you know? That's just one thing I always wish, right? I just... Shut up. I just wish, like, fucking... I just wish that... I hope... I hope that, you know... Everything that I've done... And I've already, you know, whatever. But I just wish that. And this was completely pointless. I wish that it paid off. But every single time, it doesn't. That's just what I'm going to have to deal with still. It hits you like a boulder every time. Um, it really does. I don't want to single out anybody. But, you know. It's hard. It's hard to not want... Because I don't want to be that person that plays Fortnite every stream. That's like their thing. Or that person who plays Valorant every single stream. Or that person who plays Apex Legends every single stream. Or Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Counter-Strike Source... League of Legends. Just all these games. Just chatting. All these things, these categories, just I don't want to be that person who will do something that everybody else is doing. Because that's apparently what everybody's telling everybody to do. Like, oh, you gotta play a game and but then you have to be good at the game, and you also have to deal with backseaters constantly and children uh, constantly harassing you um, because you're not doing good at something or you're not playing something or, like, it's just, there's just so much things. And for me to be a variety streamer is essentially telling myself to kill myself, basically, because um, I'm not doing the norm. And I'm actually doing different things. I try to do different things every stream, you know, to keep, you know, to keep something, keep it fresh as much as I can with, of course, in between a playthrough of something. Because this, I'm just trying something different. I do a playthrough and then just random games in between just to kind of keep it fresh. But I just, I don't know. I know that I don't want to play VR chat, <laughs> but sometimes I just think if I don't do something like that every once in a while, I'm going to kill my channel and I have to keep doing that at least every, I, I can't just keep doing what I want to do because nobody wants me to be able to do what I want to do. Nobody likes that. Everybody just wants me to fucking do what they want. Nobody want, cares about me. Nobody cares about my feelings. They just care about if I'm playing fucking... If I'm playing Terraria with viewers. That's the only thing that's interesting. And you know, I've given these people these things. And you know what happens every time? It doesn't pay off. Almost. It, 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 you get that high of just like, oh, I got these people watching for once. But that's it. They're not going to come back. You can do the same thing. But. You're almost never going to get the same thing. It's like chasing a dragon. And. I realize that. I'm very self aware of that. Every single time I play. Something. I'm just like. I'm chasing the dragon. You know. I'm chasing that. Dream. Every single day. And 
the sad part is that it's just it almost never happens every single time my hopes get are given up every single day every single day i'm just like i i want a goal of at least one new follower or maybe one new reoccurring viewer and almost all the time all the time those people those new people that come in and give me a follow or give me a you know they watch me for that one game they don't come back for anything else and that happened with shinmu those like at least four people that would come back to that was only coming back to watch me play shinmu they didn't care about me playing the game after that or the game prior to that or anything like that even roblox even fucking roblox isn't getting me any views like it used to and maybe that's because i'm not playing like trendy games i don't know what the issue is is it because i'm streaming at 6 30 p.m which wouldn't make sense um i remember i wanted to play stardew one day that didn't work no one watched and i i used to whenever i wasn't getting one watching it would it would um it would discourage me or i'm trying to think of the word i'm so sorry i'm sorry that i'm not fucking that's another thing that happened i'll get into that probably in a minute maybe another stream i'll mention it because it did bother me for like an entire night and kept me up but um it discourages me from wanting to keep streaming so i sometimes i've had streams where i'm playing it i'm just like i i'm gonna go I, i'm sorry i just i it just it just doesn't make me want to keep streaming and it just throws me off entirely obviously this time around i'm just trying to just deal with it but before for like a little bit i would just just end the stream if no one was watching after an hour <laughs> and it's been two hours now almost two hours actually it's almost been three hours now and um there's like no one knew who's if someone knew who's popped in the uh the viewer counter doesn't update unless someone stays for longer than uh five minutes i believe or like two minutes so if there's anybody who's popped in for like a minute or like a second they probably have already left prior to it there so there's probably been people throughout this entire time who's popped in been like whoa and then they left they don't feel comfortable here um some people have like that morbid curiosity i do i like listening to the struggle i guess <laughs> it's the best way i can describe it just people who are down on their luck i guess that's what's interesting. People always have this idea of the underdog story or the down on their luck, but everything comes together in the end kind of story. But that's just not how life works half the time. People put that expectation so high up that it ends up, whenever it doesn't happen, it just makes the feeling worse. Uh, whenever it doesn't happen. Um, and it almost never does, like 90% of the time. Um, there's been times where people would cheer me on for something at school, and then it doesn't happen. And that's because it completely throws me off. I, Like, I'm hearing like people go, go down, go down, and it just completely throws me off in school. So I would just like, I, that's like basically similar to this, right? So I'm just like, <sighs> so it's just, you, 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 I have that feeling but i know that like deep down that's not gonna fucking happen you, you, i yeah i bitching and complaining isn't gonna do anything or make it better or change anything literally there's nothing i can really do because i have no control over people i have zero control over people unless i'm popular of course but um that's like most people that's like like mob mentality kind of thing but you get what i'm trying to say is that i don't have control over what people do it is entirely on luck it is entirely on luck and just happens to happen you know 
like if if like one day just all out of nowhere someone's just like oh this guy's really funny let me go ahead and share that then it'll start happening that's when you get a little bit lucky no i don't use reddit or anything like that so i wouldn't even know if it's been happening to me but i've just been unlucky and it doesn't do anything i don't know i don't really keep up with that kind of stuff so i don't even know the only kind of feedback i'd get if that were to ever happen would be someone just mentions it in the chat someone's like hey i saw you on reddit or some or saw you on youtube or something like that but i don't get that i don't get any kind of feedback but yeah i have no control over people so if there's anybody who does something like that then cool that's great but i can't tell them i can't just sit here and be like do it do it do it and they'll do it you expect them to do it no one just does it just to do it because for your own sake they'll do it on their own terms people like to do things on their own terms if you tell people not to do something naturally they're gonna do the complete opposite and they'll do they won't listen because everybody on twitch and just on youtube are just a bunch of children i mean mentally i'm saying mentally children um who are just like no i don't want to because they, they're like they're like hey you better stop backseating they're like no it's like a child that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> Um, but yeah, just, I hope, uh, I hope you related to this in some way. I hope that I made this personal enough. The viewer listening, viewers, I don't know. But maybe you'll give this old small boy, small channel a try. Maybe you'll give me a try. Whoever's new, maybe you want to, you know, stick around. Maybe you want to say hi. Maybe you want to, maybe you like what I'm doing. Maybe you'll learn to like what I do because not everything is surface level. Sometimes you have to actually read past the first page to get something enjoyable out of it, right? So just like a book, give it a chance. You won't get what you're looking for. You won't get anything from just reading the back of the book or the front or the first page or the or the <laughs> or the con uh, table of contents or the in memory of or the this is uh for blank or whatever you get what i'm saying or the the author's notes <laughs> you get it from reading it taking in the information and just going ham you know you just you slowly learn to appreciate it and you slowly learn to just go hey this guy ain't too bad but you know not everyone's like that most people aren't like that on twitch it's just you have to be someone that they know or else they don't feel comfortable they don't want to try anything new no one likes to try new things sometimes it's really hard to get people to actually get out of their bubble and to get out of their shell. So. Or, oh yeah, no, that's another thing. Or a famous Twitch, like, a famous person shouts you out. But I'd have to have, like, 100,000 minimum followers for me to get any kind of shout out. Because I, even popular people don't even watch smaller people 90% of the time. Sometimes they get a morbid curiosity, but that's, like, very rare. And then they don't even stick around sometimes. So that's that's the end. Um, I hope you have a good morning, good uh, good day, good afternoon, and a good night. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.